Welcome back to another season of High School Football on CISN TV. I'm Trent Condon here with you in the pregame show presented by Fairway. An exciting season of high school football gets started here tonight in Class 5A. No, I'm not misspeaking. We got new classes this year and an extra class this season as they have moved now to 5A all the way down to 8-player. So we'll be talking about the big schools this year. No longer 4A. It is now 5A for the big classes. Preseason number one this year, it's a team that played for a title last season in the Unidome, the Southeast Polk running Rams. A lot of returning talent coming back for Southeast Polk as they were upended last year in the Unidome by Ankeny. The defending state champions have a lot returning as well. Of course, also in the top five this year, the Dowling Catholic Maroons. Their long reign finally came to an end last season as they were upended in the state semifinals, but they're raring to go here this season. We're going to take a look around some of the top teams around the area. We'll take a look at the CISN teams that we'll be covering throughout this high school football season, and also a little look around the state in the big school class of some of the big teams and names to keep an eye on. But before we get started with that, we are happy to be aboard with you, presented by Fairway, a presenting sponsor of all of our coverage all season long, a great Iowa company, and we are happy to be partnered with Fairway here for this football season. Let's get started, and let's start with the preseason number one team. These rankings come from the Des Moines Register, and it is Southeast Polk. A lot of headliners there for Southeast Polk. Start with their quarterback, Jackson Daly. He made a commitment to Arkansas State out of the Sun Belt. Sun Belt had a great year on the college football scene a year ago. Upset wins from a lot of the programs. He'll be going to Arkansas State, but before that, he wants to bring a championship to Southeast Polk. They were on the precipice a year ago. The lefty has played very well this season. He'll have an opportunity to do it with a lot of big names around him. You look at the headliners there, it's not just the quarterback. Xavier Wampka back for his senior season. Has not made a college commitment yet, but he has got all kinds of offers across the country. Wampka, Notre Dame is involved. Ohio State, maybe he'll stay home with the Hawkeyes or the Cyclones. He hasn't made that decision what we do know, one of the hardest hitters from the safety position. He'll also play a little bit of running back with Titus Christensen this season. Do it all safety, Xavier Wampka for the Rams. And also, you look at that team, they are built with big physical guys up front, and there's nobody bigger than Caden Proctor. Proctor, who had an offer from Michigan before he ever played a varsity snap, he's now an upperclassman, still just a junior. He's got two seasons in front of him. The solid tackle will be out there for the Rams this year and looking forward to him. Who's going to be chasing down the Rams, though? Well, at number two, it's the team they face in week one, the Dowling Catholic Maroons. As mentioned, though they didn't win another state championship a year ago, they played some great, great football. Tom Wilson has a squad ready to compete again this year. And for me, it starts at the quarterback position. There, Jackson Smolik, a youngster who saw playing time last year as a sophomore, has made big strides, a big-time arm. He can sling it all over the field. He's got some pretty good weapons to go along with it this year for the Maroons. Then you go to number three. It's another Central Iowa team. That's the defending state champion, the Ankeny Hawks. Though a lot of the names are going to change, there's going to be plenty that you remember from a year ago. The quarterback, though, that'll be different. Jace Bauer. He's off to play in the MAC at Central Michigan. The new quarterback makes the short trek, though, from Centennial, a transfer in J.J. Cole. J.J. had an incredible summer, picked up offers from Iowa State, from Iowa. Alabama is sniffing around. He's got big opportunities in front of him. A big quarterback, six foot six. He's big, he's strong, and he can really throw the football. J.J. Cole for the Ankeny Hawks. He's got Caden Cadolf back for another season. Outstanding running back. He put up big numbers last year. You couple that with Brady McCullough, 
the wide receiver, and Ryan Crandall on the defensive end will keep everybody in check. Number four in the preseason top 10 from the Des Moines Register, it is Cedar Falls from Northeast Iowa. Great program up there. Coach Remmert does a really good job, and you know they're going to be back in a big-time way this season. At number five in the Register rankings, it is the Valley Tigers, and uh, a team that last year had struggles early on. Really improved throughout the course of the season. Played great in their playoff victory against Urbandale, but then their season came to a close. Not on the field, but off of it as they were not able to play their quarterfinal matchup against Dowling Catholic. A lot of disappointment, but made those offseason workouts, I think, that much more important for Valley as they come in to 2021. A lot of other good area schools around also with a chance to check in here to the rankings this season. I really like the squad that Coach Anderson has in Urbandale. I think the Jayhawks have a chance to be really good. Played a youngster at quarterback a season ago in Peyton Roddinghouse. He's back for his junior campaign. A lot of upside with him. they got a good wide receiver in Friedrichsen who will be back. And Jalen Ziegler, one of the fastest guys in central Iowa. He's over there at the cornerback spot. He can make some big-time plays. Their rival up there in the northern suburbs, of course, the Johnston Dragons. they got a quarterback back in Jack Roots who comes back. He also will kick. He'll punt. He'll do a little bit of everything. They had the upset heard around the state a year ago as they beat Donnelly Catholic. We'll see if they can build upon that this season. Blake Tubbs is back for another season at the running back spot. Saw some action last year as a sophomore. Really talented guy in that backfield for the Dragons. Ankeny Centennial. How about the Jaguars? Trey Porter. He can do a little bit of everything. Plays both ways. Last year, the Jaguars maybe played as many sophomores as Coach Bazzetti ever has in his career. Those guys are now upperclassmen. Expect to jump forward this year from the Jaguars. We go to Waukee. The two now, Waukee schools. A big change this season, Waukee High and Waukee Northwest. Northwest basically brought the whole coaching staff with them to the new school from former Waukee High. Going to be a look there. Going to be a change. Coach Baker takes over at Waukee coming in. A lot of new looks there. We'll see. On paper, have to think Northwest has a chance to take the big step forward here in year number one. And, of course, you can't forget about the city schools. Is this the year that a city school finally upends somebody from the suburbs? A lot of people are pointing maybe to week two with Des Moines Roosevelt getting their opportunity against Waukee. A big possibility there. Roosevelt, they got a quarterback in a big-time way in Jamison Patton. They're going to be there, of course, Hoover, every single year. You know, they're going to be up for a fight. You look at Lincoln, a lot of good football being played also in the city schools. We'll see if this is the year that they can take a step forward. It's a different look. It's a different season, but it's still going to be hard-hitting football, and we'll have it here all season long for you on CISN TV. We'll take a quick timeout. Conversation with the coaches coming up next. We'll hear from the coaches from your game presented by Elite Eye Care. When we come back, it's Prep Preview on CISN TV presented by Fairway. A business name is important, sure. For one, it's how we connect with you, find you, and do business with you. But what's behind the name matters more. Roshan Corporation of Iowa is now Graphite Construction Group. We're building offices, retail centers, tenant improvements, schools, and more. But the most important thing we build? Our relationship with you. Let's get started on your construction project. Visit us at graphitegrp.com. Holtz Plumbing and Heating continues to be one of Central Iowa's fastest growing plumbing, heating, and cooling companies. I'm proud of what we've accomplished at Holt. Our team is leading the way in providing the latest in home comfort solutions, and we have fun doing it. Our passion is to be the clear first choice for all your plumbing, heating, cooling, and home service needs. But at the end of the day, a job well done and a happy customer means everything to us. Just one more reason why more and more Central Iowans are saying, let Holt handle that. 
If you plan to buy a franchise business or you're thinking of starting a new franchise, there's a lawyer right here in Central Iowa that can help you through the process. Rush Nigget, a Brick Gentry Law PC, has set up an affordable service to help individuals considering buying or starting a franchise business. Learn more online at rushonbusiness.com. Let Rush Nigget help you buy or start your franchise. Rush Nigget, the franchise lawyer with Brick Gentry Law PC. It's good to have Rush on your side. Who loves you, Iowa? Schottenkirk Chevy Wacky does. In 10 minutes or less, let Schottenkirk Chevy make you an offer on the spot for your vehicle, regardless of make, model, condition, or value. With our early lease termination program, we can help you get out of your lease, whether you bought from us or not. Click, call, or stop in to get an offer for your car in 10 minutes or less. Who loves you, Iowa? Schottenkirk Chevy Wacky does. WackyChevy.com. with the coaches here on CISN are brought to you by Elite Eye Care. Let's go to Ankeny. Paul Yeager had an opportunity to talk with the head coach for the Ankeny Hawks. Here is Coach Nelson. Coach, the last time you played a football game, it was for a state championship. Now you've got a football game where it's the classic. Classic Ankeny, classic Waukee. Different teams, different seasons, but it's still kind of fun, a lot of the same parts. How do you process all of that that's going on from the high of last year to the starting of a new year? Well, uh, last year seemed like a long time ago. Um, so um, I, I just think that we just have to get ready for a, a gauntlet. So, I mean, we need every game to just try to keep getting better and better and better and better and better. I mean, that's what I've talked to the kids about is just – you know how you prepare, how you focus. You know, do your do your job, and play hard and have fun. And if we'll continue to do that throughout the season, we'll, we'll have a really good football team. Um, Waukee has had our number. Um, you know, they've beat us in three close football games, um, very close. And so we've only beat them once. So. Um, they're going to get a little bit of taste of it, I think, what it's like to split and, and have all your coaches move to one school and all the kids that played go to one school. So um, it seems very similar to how it was described to me when Nick and Adam were first here when the school split. It is. Coach Baker told me earlier this week, he's like, you, as in the Ankeny Hawks, are the defending champs, and so that target's on your back. How do the guys embrace that in the off season, knowing that it's something they would like to continue? Well, it's it's a neat experience. Even though there was maybe a hundred fans at the state championship game, um, it's a very, um, I guess it's a it's a very interesting feeling that you just don't get very often. Um, that feeling of I don't know joy, enthusiasm. Um, you know, just or just maybe it's just relief, like, oh my gosh, we did it. You know, um, it, that's a feeling that I, I don't know how many, maybe one team a year, I guess, in each sport gets to feel like that, and it's pretty neat. So when you feel that, um, it's kind of like the dopamine. I mean, you want more and more and more, and, and so I, I think that's probably one of the things that maybe has has motivated them. I and we try to do a, a we try to have a, a, a really. Um, I think a solid culture here. We try. We talk to the kids a lot about character and what it is to serve and what it is to be a teammate and what it is to be an outstanding young man in the school, out of school, on the field. You know, who, you know, who do you want to be? And so we talk to our kids a lot about that. And, um, so I, I, you know, every year is different. Um, We'll have, I'm sure, our ups and downs, but every school does. It's just how you're going to react to it. 
You have some parts back, but you also have some key new parts. Let's start on the offensive line, your specialty. You got a couple of guys back. Uh, talk about the, the, the job that Espino's got to do to kind of lead you here. Well, Espino was voted captain, so that's a really neat honor for him. Um, he's, uh, he's a really neat kid. Um, uh, super passionate, very intelligent, really good leader, works really well with um, other kids. He would be a great coach. <laughs> um, I think he wants to go into athletic training, but um, so he'll be around athletes, but uh, he would be a fantastic coach. It, he'll play a little bit of everywhere if guys get dinged up. Um, and so then Joe Kingston's next to him, who's is really in, improved, I think, from last year. Um, so those two on our right side should be really solid. And then we're really happy um, with Ryan Mayer, who's playing center. Um, Tyler Campbell graduated, and uh, Ryan Mayer's done an, an excellent job. Um, he's uh, very driven. Um, he wants to do good. Uh, he works at it. And so I'm really pleased with him. And then Drew Monsavius moved in um, from a school up north. And uh, he's done really well. And then Ethan Thomas, who played some for us last year, is our left tackle. And um, he's done a nice job. So I I'm really happy with our offensive line. And then we have um, Kruger at tight end, Booth, and then uh, Aguirre at tight end. Those three kids will play tight end. A lot of, you got a lot of options. Um, you also have a returning running back. Colin Cadolf has been very good. A little injury kind of hampered some of his development, but he also got to learn from guys like Arlen Bruce. It seems like in interviews I've read with Colin, he's embracing the role of a leader. Is that accurate? Yeah, I mean, Colin um, is our best athlete, our most explosive athlete, our fastest athlete. Um, so we're really counting on him to to maybe take some pressure off of JJ, um, and so that puts pressure on Kadolf. It puts pressure on the offensive line, the tight ends. But um, I think he'll have a really good year. Um, he's he's in good shape. Um, he's strong. He's explosive. So I'm I'm really excited to watch him run uh, tomorrow night. J.J. Cole, you've kind of alluded to him a little bit. New guy, 6'6", um, six, six is what he's listed on in your roster. He's a tall kid. He's athletic. It seems like every Division One coach knows a lot about him. How has J.J. fit into this system? How have you acclimated into the way the Hawks do things? Well, he moved at semester, which was um, really in our favor and his. So he, he's made friends. I think when I watched our baseball team playing um, Valley uh, here at our, our baseball stadium, I was sitting, standing up on the softball side, and it was a pretty good crowd. So, um, And I just watched all of our football players. He was standing on third baseline, and I watched all of our football players gravitate towards him. So I was like, okay, this is good. Um, so I, I think, you know, he's he's earned that respect and – um, they voted him a captain, and so I, I think that speaks volumes. He's very, very similar character-wise to Jace. Um, they're different quarterbacks, um, but they're very similar about their passion for being a quarterback and um, just a human. They're, he, they're both just outstanding human beings. Defensively, uh, you got a lot of key guys back. What's going to have to be something that's important? A lot of times this first game, the defense is sometimes ahead of the offense. Is that true this year? Yeah, I, I'd say a little bit. You know, we, we go against each other a lot. Um, and so there's times when we'll do good against them, and then there's times when we have a hard time blocking them. Um, but – I think our defense will feed off of each other. I, I think there's some kids. Our whole football team, they genuinely like each other. Um, there's a brotherhood. Um, and so I, I think once some things happen on defense, you know, if they can get, get some things going, I mean, I think they'll just play better and better and better throughout, throughout the night. So um, we're excited. We have two pretty good safeties. We moved Cornwell to safety and then uh, – we have Crandall, so those are two nice safeties. And then corners, we'll run about three of them. We'll run Johnson, Sandvig, 
and Owens at, at corners. And then uh, we moved our two outside backers, uh, Webb Tate and Pennygruff, inside linebackers. And um, they, look, they look to be really solid. And our D-lines come along. Um, I, Sean Gavin we at ADM and then the Valley scrimmage. Uh, I hope he can just play like that all year because he's just been lights out. So I was really, um, really excited to watch him tomorrow night. What do you see as keys tonight? Um, I, I just think, um, obviously, the, it's probably the biggest thing is we have to be able to block on offense and we have to be able to tackle on defense. And then on on special teams is just the hidden yardage, you know, whether it's a bad punt or, you know, a snap or maybe they kick off. You know, we just need to stop some of the hidden yardage to give Waukee um, – I don't know the glimmer of hope, but to where they get things rolling. And uh, so if we can do execute on kicking, our kicking game, I think we're going to play pretty pretty good on offense and defense. So the kicking game, I think, is really a, a big key for us uh, tomorrow night. Just kick off, kick off return. Punt is always a huge um, concern. You know, PAT field goal. I, I just think it all um, adds up. So um, I think the kids will be ready. Uh, I'm excited to watch this team. I just want to see what, what, what we have and what can we do. Um, I think I know, but you never know till you actually get out and play a full game and, and you have you know some bad things happen, how they're going to respond. Um, I, I think I know, but um, you know these kids are only 17, 18 years old, so um, sometimes you think you might know, but the, you know they prove you wrong. So um, our coaches have done a great job. Um, I, I love working with the guys here, and um, I, I'm, I'm just excited to, to. I hope have a normal season. I, I hope we can get through it to where the kids get to get to feel what it's like to, you know, have fans at a game and their student body at a game. I, I just, I hope that we get through this season. We'll see how they all unfold under the Friday night lights. Thanks, coach. Thank you very much. All right, that's head coach of the Ankeny Hawks, Rick Nelson. I'm Paul Yeager. The CISN.TV pre-show, pre-game show continues right after this. For all of your and your family's eye care needs, make it Elite Eye Care. Dr. Ethan Heisman, Dr. Heidi Bell, and Dr. Kelsey Sawatsky provide expert eye care close to home. From eye exams to contact lenses, eyeglasses to sunglasses, make Elite Eye Care your local optometrist. Set up your next eye care appointment with Elite Eye Care, 9250 University Avenue in West Des Moines, and online at eyedrdesmoines.com. Obsessively, relentlessly. That's what you can always expect, even when faced with the unexpected. It's a service we take seriously, providing comfort in the rain, tools to help you save, a helping hand along the way, and from a safe distance away, delivering the energy you need while going the extra mile. Regardless of the times, our team remains committed to you. Guys, are you looking for an excuse to watch football all weekend long? Then schedule your vasectomy with the Urology Center of Iowa. The Urology Center of Iowa offers nitrous during your vasectomy, cutting-edge technology to help you relax during your procedure. Make the call to 515-400-3550. That's 400-3550 or online at iowauro.com. Vasectomies with the Urology Center of Iowa. And tell them you heard it on KXNO. Our team at DRM and Ford Indianola are committed to giving you an exceptional ownership experience. As a family-owned business, my dad and I are in the dealership every day to ensure you experience the DRM difference. Our core values of hard work, honesty, trust, and integrity are what we build our business on. Experience the difference at the all-new DRM and Ford Indianola. Where you'll actually enjoy doing business. The all-new DRM and Ford Indianola. DRM and Ford. Hi, I'm Joe the Car Guy with Westside Auto. I'm excited to tell you about our new lifetime oil change plan. When you purchase our plan, you'll never have to pay for an oil change again. If you get a different car, simply transfer the plan over. If that car's oil needs are different than your original plan, just pay the difference. It couldn't be simpler. You won't have to worry about inflation or prices going up. Give us a call at Westside Auto Pros to get details on the lifetime oil change plan. 
And remember, when I say lifetime, I mean your lifetime, not just your cars. So the new head coach of the Waukee Warriors, Gabe Baker, no stranger to Central Iowa, but now you're the head guy. What's it, uh, what's it been like in this transition? You know, to be honest, it's a little surreal because it was always kind of a pipe dream to get back here at, at a big school level as a head coach. So when it all kind of came together with a lot of people I know uh, from the past just kind of makes it surreal, like I said, but also feels like home. It, it, it's a place that I think we've always – meant to be at, and, and we're happy to be here, my family and I. You assisted at Valley for a number of years under Coach Swenson. Uh, what's that conversation been like with him uh, as you're both at large schools now? Yeah, he's he's been one of my mentors ever since I started coaching. Uh, he kind of helped me along the whole coaching path, what, what I need to do to get where I wanted to be. Uh, but he's really just, he, he's kind of been more of a friend at this this point in time. You know, we talked a lot of times in the winter time as we we're doing the transition uh, and, and just kind of some of the ins and outs, the little things that were going to arise, just being at a bigger school compared to some smaller schools. He's been nothing but a great asset. But he hasn't had to basically start a program. Yes, it's not you're, you're in the existing school, but when you have half of it uh, split out, you have a unique challenge. What have been some goals for you in this transition? I think one of the biggest goals is just setting our foundation of who we want to be. You know, that's our whole coaching staff for one, getting on the same page and then communicating with the kids. What type of team are we going to be? Uh, we can't worry about the wins and losses at this point in time with our program. What we have to do is worry about how we're going to act on and off the field and kind of the product that we're going to have in the future. What's the goal of the Gabe Baker uh, Waukee Warrior? I think I asked you that the other day. Is it still the same? It hasn't changed in two days. No, it, it hasn't changed. But, you know, we're looking for an all-around good student athlete. We want them to be better people when they're done. I know a lot of coaches say that, but we, we truly think that because it's about their experience in high school sports. Uh, that experience can get better when you win football games. Uh, we've lived it as as players, and we want we want them to have that, that success also. Uh, but we want to have – a whole community around our program. And that's what makes high school special. And that's what we want from the Waukee Warriors. You're going to be spending a lot of time with the offense, but you got to spend time with both sides of the ball. Let's start with your offense. What do you like about what they're accomplishing in camp? I think it's taken some time for everybody to grasp what we've been doing. It's it's not a lot different from what they've done in the past, but terminology is, is big with kids. Uh, so just the learning aspect, uh, we kind of went back to basics, a lot of fundamentals, a lot of little details of what we've worked on. So now we're getting into more of the scheme and, and really trying to fine, fine tune uh, what we're doing X's and O's wise with these kids. Who are some guys we're going to see stand out tonight? Well, I, I really think our quarterback has made some leaps and bounds. Uh, Blake Hawk, he's, he's a junior. Uh, he's going to have to use his legs a little bit to run, uh, but I think he's going to He's going to keep progressing throughout the season just like he has this summer. I think Brennan Matthews is going to be a leader for us up front. Uh, he plays tackle for us, and uh, he's, he has to show that leadership because there's a lot of inexperienced guys on that front line. I also think two receivers that could have a big impact are Ray Hall and Ben Kamara. Uh, th this is their first real varsity action, and I'm excited to see what they do underneath the lights. On the defensive side, you got a, again, new terminology and a little bit of a scheme change for some of these guys as well. Yeah, scheme-wise, it is different. Uh, like I talked to you before, is Coach Carter, Khalil Carter, is running our defense and has done a great job so far. Uh, we have to utilize kind of our speed and move move guys around and have different blitz, blitzes and stunts uh, to try to confuse all teams, not only just Ankeny tonight. So... I really think up front you're going to see Morris Kona uh, be, be one of our better players on our defense. He's going to play defensive end for us. I also think Jace Nelson, uh, one of our middle linebackers, uh, he, he's improved so much over the course of our camp and from last year that I'm really excited to see what he does out there. And, and lastly, probably in the secondary, I'd say Lucas Strzok. Uh, he's a junior for us. Uh, he's a pretty physical safety, has great ball skills, and and we'll see what he can do against these very talented receivers that Ankeny has. 
Ankeny does, uh, they still have that uh, championship trophy the last time they played. They are the defending champs, a little different team. What jumps out, uh, what's gotten your attention in preparation for them? Well, for one, when, when you're the state champions the year before, you're the champions until someone else knocks you off. So to me, they're the state champions this entire season until we crown a new one or them again at the end of the year. Who knows? Uh, so I think that swagger is one thing. You know, if when you have that championship swagger, it's hard to take that away from high school kids. So th they have that. They have that confidence. I also think they're, they're just fast. Their entire football team is fast. It doesn't matter what position. So we have to try to match their speed and intensity from the get-go. And, and we really have to try to come out and just say, hey, here we are. Let's play a football game. And let's get this thing going. It's a classic game. Waukee Classic, Ankeny Classic, right? A little bit, you know, it's kind of strange to see how this is all working out. Uh, when you get a chance to play, you know, you've been coaching at a, a lot of different places, but to have the W there on your shirt as you prep and, and, and the, you know, this is a new chapter uh, for Waukee. What, what's going to be that final message to these guys tonight before you play? I think it has to be to go out and enjoy this. This is, this is an experience there's no other team in the state that will experience. You know, starting kind of from scratch like this, these kids get to set the tone for the rest of what happens at Waukee High School. These are the kids that get to do it, and this is the start. Uh, win, lose, or tie, I know that's, that's tricky to do, but win, lose, or tie, we are going to set the tone for what's going to happen for future success because that will happen um, for the Waukee Warriors. Even though you teach math, you, you, you talk like a writer and, and talking in threes, win, lose, or tie. That's uh, well done, coach. <laughs> I, I wasn't very good at English, so don't give me that much credit. <laughs> All right, Gabe Baker, head coach of the Waukee Warriors. Coach, thank you for the time uh, and enjoy the night. That was conversation with the coaches here on CISN.TV. Thank you to Elite Eye Care with their sponsorship here with us this football season. Well, with that, we get ready for the kickoff of your games. A quick preview and a look inside the matchups of your game tonight on CISN TV. Presented all season long by Fairway, we come back. Kickoff right around the corner on CISN. For all of your and your family's eye care needs, make it Elite Eye Care. Dr. Ethan Heisman, Dr. Heidi Bell, and Dr. Kelsey Sawatsky provide expert eye care close to home. From eye exams to contact lenses, eyeglasses to sunglasses, make Elite Eye Care your local optometrist. Set up your next eye care appointment with Elite Eye Care, 9250 University Avenue in West Des Moines, and online at eyedrdesmoines.com. Hi, this is Chris from Fireplace Superstore, and you've probably noticed there's shortages on most everything in the market today. Well, Heat & Glow has helped us out this year, and they are focusing their energy on their gas fireplace inserts. So if you've got a drafty old wood-burning fireplace and you want to get it retrofitted into a beautiful, high-efficient gas fireplace, come see us. We will have product to sell you. Heat & Glow Gas Fireplace Insert from Fireplace Superstore, 109th and Douglas in Urbandale, just west of Homemakers. Why do I look for the seal? It's about trust. Whether I'm buying a car, hiring a contractor, finding a tax preparer, or an honest mechanic, the Better Business Bureau seal means this business meets high standards. When I see the seal, I know I'll get what I pay for. No more taking chances and no more worries. And I feel good about supporting local businesses. My life is so much easier knowing I can always trust BBB accredited businesses. It pays to look for the seal. See for yourself at bbb.org backslash Iowa. Trent kind of back with you one final time as we get ready for kickoff tonight. It's Waukee and Ankeny and this Central Iowa matchup here on CISN TV presented by Fairway. We throw it down to the field right now. Paul Yeager and crew get ready for kickoff and play by play. It's the Hawks and the Warriors next on CISN.
Thank you very much, Trent. Good evening to you on a sun-soaked, very warm evening. It is time to kick off the 2021 high school football season for Ankeny Stadium. Along with Tim Halber, I'm Paul Yeager. Jeff Brooks will be along with us in a little bit. But it is an atmosphere, Tim, like no other. It is a Friday night. It is high school football. We're getting back to a sense of fans in the stands. They're ready to go. Are you? Yes, I am. Looking forward to this, you know, for the, for the whole summer. That's uh, it feels it's still August. It still feels like it's the summer out there. But yes, nothing greater than high school football starting starting on time. I know the players are excited to get this thing going. The marching band is playing. We've already had our national anthem. We've had warm ups for the majority from both of these teams tonight. It's the Waukee Warriors and the Yankee Hawks. This is a classic matchup. Both of these school districts have experienced a high school split in the last ten years. It's just a little more recent for Waukee. Tonight, we'll call it the Classic Bowl, Tim, if you will. The Ankeny Hawks and the Waukee Warriors. New coach for Waukee, Gabe Baker. No stranger to Central Iowa. He was an assistant at Valley with head coaching stops at Pleasantville and Clear Creek Amana. Tonight, he gets a chance with Waukee. What's he have to work with? Uh, it's, it's different because they have the recent splits. It's like taking your last year's squat and splitting it in half. He's got, he has to create a new culture. Uh, he brings in a new offensive scheme. So the players are not only adjusting to uh, about half their size of their squad, but also a new offense, new terminology that the players have to work with. And that is something that can be easy to do if you're running the same offense, but what used to be a wiggle is a waggle or a zebra is now a cheetah. That takes a little bit of time. The philosophy on offense tonight is going to be the same. They're going to run the ball, but they, they're probably going to have to pass the football. Yeah, that's going to be the challenge because I look at this Ankeny defense, and they bring back a lot of experience, have a lot of speed out there. So the challenge is, can you get yards and can you move the ball through the air and on the ground against this stout Ankeny defense? Blake Hawk gets the nod at quarterback for Waukee, but for Ankeny, it'll be a quarterback that's familiar to the town, but not to the school. J.J. Cole was the starting quarterback for Centennial last season, moved in the offseason, played basketball for the Hawks. Tonight he lines up under center in an offense that – might fit his skill set just a little differently than it did last year. That's what Coach Nelson was talking about, that he comes in there, he's an experienced quarterback, there's a lot of Division One schools looking at him, he's got the talent, he's 6'6", he can throw the ball, but the terminology is different, the reads are different, so he has to be on the same page as his receivers. It's not for his game to win tonight, but he's got a lot of talent around him, kind of let the whole offense work it and get more comfortable with running this offense. Colin Cadolf comes back at running back. Last year it was Cadolf and Arlen Bruce. Cadolf Got hurt towards the end of last season with an ankle injury. He's faster, he's bigger, he's stronger. He's hoping to repeat what he did last year. Tim, here's the big question. How does Ankeny repeat in 2021? Really, it's, a, it's an old line. Take it one game at a time. I know they got some preseason rankings. They got them as high as number two in the state. Um, they know Southeast Polk's out there, but I think they have to kind of go through and develop as a team and find their own identity. They can't be the same team as last year. I think if they do that, find out are they maybe a better passing team than they were last year. Can the quarterback run? Can they stay healthy? We'll see how the season progresses by game nine. And that defense is returning a lot of parts. Now, some of them are in new parts. Guys that were on the outside into the inside, and I'm talking in the linebacker core specifically with Penningroth and Tandem Webb-Tate. Both of those guys played a lot last year. Penningroth had an injury. He's back, hopefully to full health if you're cheering for Ankeny tonight. Why is the inside so important on a defense? In that 3-4 defense, the two inside people really dictate where a lot of things go. They can blitz off those packages. And even the outside linebackers, they're very athletic, so that's why the 3-4 fits them very well. Also down the middle, you've got Jackson in the middle, Simonson we've seen before. And Coach even talking about uh, Gavin, you know, being a big player that he's had some impact here early on. So they're expecting big things out of him. So it depends what those three inside linemen can do. They can chew up a lot of blockers, and the linebackers can make a lot of plays. We're going to take a little break here, and we'll bring in the third member of our broadcast crew, find out what it's like down on the field. We're ready to go. Hopefully you are as well, wherever you may be watching around the world tonight. It is Waukee and Ankeny kickoff moments away here on CISN.TV. Welcome to Sonic. May I take your order? One banana pudding shake. Cutting the bananas right now. Someone got those vanilla wafers? Almost ready. One banana pudding shake. Order up. Obsessively, relentlessly. That's what you can always expect, even when faced with the unexpected. It's a service we take seriously, providing comfort in the rain, tools to help you save, a helping hand along the way, 
and from a safe distance away. Delivering the energy you need while going the extra mile. Regardless of the times, our team remains committed to you. Holt Plumbing and Heating continues to be one of Central Iowa's fastest growing plumbing, heating, and cooling companies. I'm reminded of that every day as I see our fleet of vehicles in all shapes and sizes head out to help customers in need. We work hard to keep our vehicles clean and in good shape. Some are customized with great ideas and some maybe not so much. But at the end of the day, a job well done and a happy customer means everything to us. Just one more reason why more and more Central Iowans are saying, let Holt handle that. Really like your backyard, man. There's nothing to the east, so I could do this all day. No, 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 Patrick. East is that way. Oh, man, that's not good. With Hy-Vee Isles Online, it's easy to order online and pick up everything you or your neighbors might need. Sorry about your hot dogs. All right. It won't happen again. Okay. Hy-Vee Isles Online. Convenient pickup and we deliver, too. Welcome to Sonic. May I take your order? One banana pudding shake. Cutting the bananas right now. Someone got those vanilla wafers? Almost ready. One banana pudding shake. Order up. Back at Ankeny Stadium, it's the Waukee Warriors and the Ankeny Hawks. There's a look at your Waukee Warriors just about ready to make their way onto the field. Currently, it is a, uh, as we mentioned off the top, a sun-filled night. It has been warm. The rain is to the north. It looks like it's going to stay away. Currently, it's 90 degrees. Feels like 95. Wind out of the south-southwest, 17 to 27 miles an hour. By about 9 o'clock tonight, we'll see the temperature to a chilly 84 degrees, but uh, it looks like that breeze is now more on the 17-mile-an-hour side as the Waukee Warriors make their way out of the field. We go down to the field to the third member of our crew, Mr. Jeff Brooks. Jeff, good evening to you. Welcome to 2021. Hey, yeah, glad to be back here tonight. I'm going to tell you right now, you talked about the wind. It is going to be a factor, no doubt about it, as I watch them wrangle the, the tunnel coming out for the players to the ground. But you know what? The wind is really offsetting the temperature down here. I'm standing in the sun. It's comfortable. I'm sure these guys did a lot of uh, pre-liquid fluid stuff all week, water and Gatorade. So that should be good besides the normal cramps that happen first game or two. But, no, the field's good. It's not real hot down here. I'm standing in the sun. I think they're all ready to go. Jeff, you had a chance to kind of catch the end of the uh, pregame uh, warm-ups and, and the atmosphere. You have the hard job of trying to contain emotion down there. Do I have that right? Yeah, well, I just kind of sit back and see what's happening on both sides. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's tough to, to be down here. I will say, though, this year I don't have a, a pull for any school. I don't have kids in any district now, so I can be a neutral fan and, and cheer for a good football game. You were neut neutral before you even knew where you, what you were. We made sure you stayed in that direction. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, Jeff Brooks, thank you so very much. He'll be talking with both coaches as the uh, ceremonial coin toss takes place, and uh, the, co the toss was won by Waukee. They defer, and so the Hawks are going to – kick from south to north. Our referee tonight is Michael Hansen. Todd Waddell is the umpire. Ronnie Weedman, the lineman. Tony Nelson, the line judge. Daniel Grooms, the back judge. Tim Halber, what do you see as keys tonight for the visiting Waukee Warriors? I think offensively just get a groove and find out, you know, get their running game going, make it more comfortable for J.J. Cole to kind of sit in there, find his receivers, find his timing, and uh, find the rhythm and get out to an early lead. And for the Ankeny Hawks? Don't let Ankeny, as that's for, for, for Waukee. Uh, Waukee's key, I think their defense has to keep them on the field and play and stop their offense. I think they can they can match the speed because it's a very fast Ankeny team, so can they match up uh, player to player? A lot of different teams, uh, guys in different positions. They're trying to figure out it's the first time. Yes, the lights are on, but we're not officially under the <laughs> lights yet. Uh, still could play this one without it, but... The speed of the game changes dramatically from practice to tonight. Yes, it does. And also, I watched the – it's a little warm out there. I know it's 90 degrees, uh, but I'd say that looking at the rotation, if there gets to be a long drive, the line, the defensive linemen start taking it in. So I think it's good to have a too deep depth out there. So if it's a long drive, warm night, you may have to start cycling some other players in there to spell some of the, the linemen. Max Pelham lined up to kick it off. The ball is teed at the 40. The Hawks in there. Home yellow, victory yellow uniforms, maroon numbers trimmed in white. The Waukee Warriors, all white uniforms, tops and bottoms, purple numbers, 
purple helmet with the warrior on one side of the helmet tonight. Pelham is lined up. Back deep is Ray Hall for the Warriors. It's time for football. It's Friday night. It's 7 o'clock. Friday, August 27, 2021. The season is underway. High end over end kick will go out of the end zone. And it'll be first and 10 for Waukee with the following offense. Blake Hawk at quarterback. Niall Eddy at running back. Ben Kamara at one wide receiver. Ray Hall and Tariq Ali. The tight end is Charlie Cross. Up front, Brandon Matthews, Ashton Turnbull, Peter McKibben at center, Sam Gorsh at right guard, and Will Stobie at right tackle. For the Yankee Hawks up front, Sean Gavin, Diego Jackson, Braden Simonson, Ben Sandvig, and Reed Johnson are the corners. Your linebackers, Nick Eaton, Jackson Penningroth, Tampton Webb Tate, Nate Nessa, and back deep, Ryan Crandall and Will Cornwell. First and ten, it'll be from the gun. Blake Hawk getting the chance, the junior at... Quarterback stands in with a uh, man to his left. That's Niall Eddy. First and ten. First play from scrimmage. One man in motion. They're going to go play action now to the left side on the option read. And a couple of yards before the tackle made. Tamden Webb Tate was one of the first there. Simonson as well. Gain of two. It'll be second and eight. So Eddie, a 5'10", 175-pound sophomore, one of three sophomores to start for Waukee. Let's see how they respond on this Friday night. Eddie now to the right side of Hawk. Looks in, stands back up, looks to the left. Gabe Baker, the head coach for Waukee, calling the plays tonight. That's where his background is, is on the offensive side. Quick pass, they go on the slant, and it's caught, Tariq Ali. And then they're going to say incomplete. It looked like Ali maybe caught it and took a step and fumbled it, but I don't think he ever had possession, says the referee, Michael Hansen. Right, Crandall got in there on the tackle. The ball hit the ground alertly, picking up the ball, thinking he had a free free run there for 20 yards for the touchdown. But... Um, good play, way to close on the receiver quickly. So brings up now a third and long, which Milwaukee does not want to get into too many of those situations. One thing Coach Baker told us this week, Tim, is he says, I cannot let that first quarter get away. If they go three and out, it's not the end of the world. It's just not ideal the way you have it drawn up. Play clock down to eight. There won't be much changing of the play from here for Hawk, who has Eddie next to him. On third and long, three-step drop. Pass is thrown, and it's intercepted by Ankeny, and going in for the touchdown, a, a pick six for the Hawks, Reed Johnson. Touchdown, Ankeny. Sat there in that zone. He backed up as a corner. The receiver took an out route. I think the that uh, Hawk was looking for him to do a cut in, do a quick slant in, uh, wide open there, took it in for a touchdown. So that's not what Waukee wanted to have for their first series. Well, in one sense, Waukee's going to get their offense back onto the field to correct anything. They'll get about a two-minute break, but they're going to be down 6-0, 7, depending on this extra point attempt. Pelham back out there out of the hold of Austin Bailey. The kick is up, and it is good. 7-0 Ankeny, 10-59 to go first quarter. Excessively, relentlessly. That's what you can always expect, even when faced with the unexpected. It's a service we take seriously, providing comfort in the rain, tools to help you save, a helping hand along the way, and from a safe distance away. Delivering the energy you need while going the extra mile. Regardless of the times, our team remains committed to you. Who loves you, Iowa? Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee does. In 10 minutes or less, let Schottenkirk Chevy make you an offer on the spot for your vehicle, regardless of make, model, condition, or value. With our early lease termination program, we can help you get out of your lease, whether you bought from us or not. Click, call, or stop in to get an offer for your car in 10 minutes or less. Who loves you, Iowa? Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee does. WaukeeChevy.com. Ankeny 7, Waukee 0 on a pick 6. And it looked like this. It was third and long. Look for number 22. Tim called it the one. There was a miss route, and that was all Reed Johnson. And he's into the score. 
Didn't take long. And the Ankeny kicking team is back out. And Tariq Ali, Ray Hall. Also back deep is Eddie. But the uh, deepest of them all is Ray Hall. Stands at the five. Pelham kicked over his head last time. And he'll do it again. Let's go down to the sideline. Jeff Brooks is there. Jeff, one of those plays that developed right in front of you. What'd you see? Yeah, it seemed to be in the right spot a lot of times. Right in front of me, you know, Waukee was in a tough spot there. Third and long, into the wind. You know, just trying to figure out a new system. And, you know, Reed Johnson, he's been there, right? So sitting back in his zone, and he knew what to do with the ball. Um, and they went downhill from there. So, and, and, and thank you very much, Jeff. Tim, did you see much pressure coming from the Ankeny defense on that play? No, he had a good blocking there. Um, you know, Hawk stepped up, Blake stepped up there and had a good run. It's just that he's reading off the corner, then he thought he was going to do a, like a hook route or an in route. Should be sitting in there, uh, but the receiver took to the sideline and uh, created such a wide open uh, field for Johnson. Motion left to right. They're going to give to Eddie. He's going to hit the line and then chug his way forward for a couple of yards. Looks like uh, first one off the, or last one off the pile, Nate Nessa. Saw Nick Eaton in there on the play. Uh, Braden Simonson up there causing, causing the running back to probably cut in a little bit sooner than he had wanted. So forcing the funnel of everything back inside, that's the big thing for the ends to do is keep the outside pressure so everything funnels back into where all the traffic is. Second down and eight after a gain of two for Eddie on his first carry of the game. Coach Baker called him a tough kid. He's going to have to have some tough yards to uh, keep moving forward to keep his team. They're going to go with... Uh, Eddie again, and Nick Eaton is there. Eaton, one of the uh, move-ins from north to south, and it's going to be a legal procedure against Waukee, or false. They may elect to decline, bringing up a third and seven. The way the defense is playing, that may be a good, good call to decline the penalty. 7-0 early on, Ankeny in the lead after a pick six. Penalty will move them back, and then they'll do uh, second down again. Fans still filing in. Student body, we did not get to see that much of a student body last year, and they are in red, white, and blue tonight. The officials have to get ready on that first game, too. Yes. They have some of those uh, first game... Issues. Some of them will work uh, scrimmages, things like that. And this is an educational thing as well as it is athletic. It'll be second down again. Ball goes back to the 17 yard line. It'll be second and 13. Clock at 10 minutes even. Hawk backed up. Eddie next to him. Hard snap count once, twice. Looks over. Play clock at 15. So we'll see if. The line's the flipped around. Eaton's on the left side. The option, they go on the screen, and it's caught. <laughs> Looks like Charlie Cross. We do have a flag down at the 15-yard line. And again, against Waukee. Nessa then made a nice open field tackle there. Nessa, another one of those players that moved from the north, but he was at Ballard on the team last year, was thinking he was going to play a little bit more, and then that, that guy named Bruce came in. And <laughs> I don't know if you've seen the news, Tim. I know you watch maybe one school a little closer than another when it comes to college football, but there's a possibility Arlen Bruce plays on Saturdays this year a little bit. I think they want to get him out there, especially now that freshman can play up to four games and not counting his eligibility. So why not put him out there and see how, how good he is? They have a tough uh, first game there against uh, Indiana. Nothing like opening up your the beginning of your season against a rival that's ranked higher than you. That'll be next Saturday, a couple of games next week. So second and 18, ball at the 12, up the middle, nowhere to go. Eddie stood straight up. A combination who I think of Nick Eaton and uh, Diego Jackson. Right, 
And that nose guard, if he's getting free and making plays in the backfield, it could be a very long night. That means he's getting off the block of the center. Usually a center and guard combination, so he is a good play by Diego. That's a look at Jackson Penningroth there, number three, and then you have 33. That's Diego Jackson, third and forever. They're going to go cross and go, what a handoff to Eddie. Nowhere to go. Ryan Crandall comes up, and it'll be a punt situation. Looked like Waukee was content with just keeping the clock moving and not going backwards. Going back deep to punt is Brennan Matthews. Yes, the 6'4", 265-pound left tackle. He can have some good kicks uh, during warm-up, so he can, uh, he can get his leg into it. I joked with Coach Baker, I go, kind of looks like Gallery. Not Robert, but his brother Nick that was a punter for the Hawkeyes. He was a big lineman back then. In the end zone, the punt is away, and the kick goes straight up. It's going to bounce at the 10, go into the end zone, and I think <laughs> that's a touchdown. <laughs> it's Braden Simonson fields the punt. At the goal line. At the <laughs> one foot. Catches it in the air and goes into the end zone. Now, they were asking, I think they would look to see if they could advance it. Maybe it checked up like a Phil Mickelson wedge at around the 20 and kicked back towards the goal line. Ankeny's lined up for an extra point. But it didn't touch anybody, so it's a live ball. Um, he could field it, and he fielded it and took it one yard into the end and, zone. And you can advance it. It's just yeah. like a punt normal. So two quick plays. The Ankeny offense hasn't even been on the field, and they're up 13-0. I think they're discussing it there, but if it, if the kicking team did not touch it, if they touch it, it's automatically down. But if they didn't touch it, it's still a ball that can be advanced. And that is going to stand. So Braden Simonson, a punt return for a touchdown. Pelham again. High snap, back down, kick is up, square through. 14-0 Ankeny leads Waukee here at Ankeny Stadium. D. Armand Ford Indianola are committed to giving you an exceptional ownership experience. As a family-owned business, my dad and I are in the dealership every day to ensure you experience the D. Armand difference. Our core values of hard work, honesty, trust, and integrity are what we build our business on. Experience the difference at the all-new DeArmon Ford Indianola. Where you'll actually enjoy doing business. The all-new DeArmon Ford Indianola. DeArmonFord.com Hi, I'm Joe the Car Guy with Westside Auto. I'm excited to tell you about our new lifetime oil change plan. When you purchase our plan, you'll never have to pay for an oil change again. If you get a different car, simply transfer the plan over. If that car's oil needs are different than your original plan, just pay the difference. It couldn't be simpler. You won't have to worry about inflation or prices going up. Give us a call at Westside Auto Pros to get details on the lifetime oil change plan. And remember, when I say lifetime, I mean your lifetime, not just your cars. We're going to think that that is possibly a uh, state record was just tied on Braden Simonson on a one-yard touchdown punt return for a touchdown. Let me get that right. Yeah. One yard punt return for touchdown. Braden Simonson on the punt. Now the reason that the punter was fair game, Brennan Matthews, is because the ball bounced before it got to Matthews, which makes him legal. There's no Correct. roughing the kicker, and I don't know if you could rough a left tackle at 2-4-2-65 yeah. or not. But uh, we'll find out from Jeff Brooks in a moment. Pelham's kick is high again and out the back of the end zone. All right, Jeff Brooks, you've yet to see the Yankee offense. They're up 14-0. You seen a start like this in a while? I don't know if I've ever seen anything like this ever before. Like, number one, I've never seen a punt. I know the, the referee said it was tipped at the line, but it was a muff punt, a muff snap, but... The backspin on that ball, I can't hit a pitching wedge or a sandwich back like that. You've tried. I try, but I can't do it. No, that was just a, a unfortunate bounce for Waukee. Um, you know, and Ankeny's right. They're doing the things they need to do. Defensively, they are looking like a freight train running downhill right now. So they're a good defense. We'll, we'll see how it plays out the rest of the game. First and 10 for Waukee from the 20, down 14 nothing. Hawk going to keep it. Get some room and finally get about five yards. 
And that'll get the Waukee fans cheering a little bit. Uh, on the ground, Tandon Webb Tate and Jackson Pennygroff combine on the tackle. Coach Baker talked about that Blake Hawk was going to need to run the ball tonight to kind of take some of the pressure off of Nile Eddy. Uh, he's a good athlete. He can run the ball. Uh, we may see more of that just to try to get try to get the first first down to get some rhythm on their offense and get out of the shadows here of their own end zone. Well, in that uh, run pass option, the RPO, the quarterback has got to be able to be a threat. Otherwise, you can key on the running back like the Hawks just did with Nile Eddy. And again, nowhere to go. Tandem Webb Tate, the tackle at the line of scrimmage. It'll be third and a four and a half yards to go. Fourteen nothing Ankeny. Sun kind of gone behind some clouds to our west. Wind still moving just a little bit from south to north. And Waukee looking to either get that first down or just get their defense onto the field. Eddie, handoff, nowhere. Nowhere to go. Jackson Penningroff there again. I remember watching him a couple of years ago. There's a really a great athlete there, a great family. You know, Jackson is playing middle linebacker, doing a great job. I see we also got uh, some new linemen in there. Cade uh, Benetham is in there as, as a nose guard. Uh, coming in. So we're going to start seeing some rotations in there, keeping those defensive linemen fresh. Matthews again to punt. Back this time, not in his own end zone, but at his own 10. Good snap. Back to him. Gets it. Nice line drive. It's going to bounce at the 45, and Nessa had no chance there for a return. I'm sorry, that uh, back there to return was Reed Johnson. Reed Johnson has a touchdown, and now for the first time tonight, we will see the Ankeny offense led by J.J. Cole. J.J. is one of the tallest guys on the team at 6'6". Let's see what he can do. Now on the offense, which will start at the Hawk 47. Cole's first snap, looking downfield to throw. He does, goes up top. Beautiful looking pass. He's got a wide open man, and it's through the hands. Incomplete. Going for Brady McCullough. I'm sure they practiced that play a time or two. McCullough was wide open. Incomplete. Hit him right in the hands. I think, I think he's not just a first game jitter. He knew that the players, I was going to say, I doubt the pass on the first down and, and exactly what they did, but... Um, Probably good to get that aired out, just kind of get that out of your system for your first uh, first play of the game. Well, Cole hasn't thrown a football on the field other than on the sideline in at least 20 minutes. So, <laughs> getting a little rusty. Handoff up the middle. Kadolf into the secondary, across into first down territory, and he does. They're going to move the chains. Colin Kadolf. Looks like Jacob Morgan and, or I'm sorry, Aiden Bright's butcher was there for the tackle. Kudolf now goes to the right side. Ankeny in that hurry up offense. They go Kudolf up the middle. He's into the secondary, still moving. He moved five yards backwards, took four players with him. One of them was uh, Cameron Johnson, and it's a pickup of nine. Last year, Coach Nelson said probably one of the best running backs in the state is is Kadolf. You know what he runs downhill. He's got he's extremely strong. He thinks he's the best athlete on this team. Second and short. Cole looks to the right side, throws the quick pass, caught, and out of bounds. Ben Kamara. I'm sorry. You say Maddox Ward. Maddox Ward. Yep. I'm looking at the wrong board here, Tim. Coach talked about really they've got probably five or six different receivers that they can choose from, not including their tight ends. So we're going to see a lot of uh, different players out there playing the wideouts, really stretching the field for this defense. First down up to the 20. Nine-yard line pass is tipped by uh, Jacob Morgan to himself. He grabs it and then getting popped by Ben Kamara coming up from that uh, 
boundary corner position. Second and 10. And that maybe should have been dropped in the first place. Haven't been many stats to look at here, Tim. It's yeah. just been a weird set of circumstances. Cole, Kadolf, handoff, spin, now twist, now spin, and turn to the 20, inside to the 19 and a half. Good enough for a first down. Gain of 10 on the play. In for the tackle for Waukee. Looked like Morris Kone. Cole throws just a little bit out of the reach of McCullough on coverage. Ben Camara. Three thirty-four, first quarter. Ankeny fourteen, Waukee nothing. They're having a tendency to pass on first down, giving them more time to set up. Kadolf, right side, dances in, out. He's got a scene. There's a penalty flag. Kadolf's going to get into the end zone, but I don't think it's going to stand. Kruger had a great block out there at tight end, but he may have hooked him a little bit. Uh, they had two people out there. Um, Espinosa was pulling, so they may have just kind of trapped somebody inside that. There's a big hole to the outside for Godolf. It is going to be a penalty against Ankeny. Spot of the foul goes back all the way to the 28. So what would have been a touchdown is called back. Hawks will wind it. Second and 20. From the 28. And that snap count, not everybody got the, me the memo on what the count was. Not sure if a player was set and then moved or two moved at the same time. I think three guys thought it was on two and the rest of them knew it was on three. I think everybody's got to get on the goal line and run a, a series of ladders for that play. Oh, it's against Waukee. So they may have had a, a defensive back lining up in the neutral zone. Against Waukee. Five-yard penalty moves it up to the 23-yard line, second and 14. Cole, three receivers to the left, one to the right. Goes to the right, too tall for Kadolf out of the backfield. That would have been good for about five or six at least. Coverage out there was Cameron Johnson for Waukee. So it'll be third down. And this is part of the situation, too, for a new team. Third down situations. This is something hard to simulate in practice, but we'll see what the Hawks have in store and what the Waukee defense will do. Kadolf up the middle. He's got no one touching him. He's got the first down. And he also has a touchdown. Colin Kadolf, 23 yards and another Hawk score. Very similar to that play he had before. He kind of looks, takes a step inside, takes a step outside, and cuts it in. Turns his body. He gets thinner as he turns you know, his shoulders in. And uh, he's a hard one to, to bring down. So uh, a really great run there. Good blocking on the, the right side to create that hole. Pelham on to attempt the extra point. Austin Bailey to hold. Ryan Mayor. Short snap. We've got a fire drill. And let's see what Bailey can do. He is going to get down. Fumble. Ball goes forward. Recovered in the end zone by... Ankeny, but... We'll it might have been a, done. was he forward, uh, fumble forward? Possibly. The point Espinoza is thinking, hey, I got a two-point conversion. You got to give me the credit for that. No good on the extra point. 20-0 Ankeny in the lead. 
Plumbing and Heating continues to be one of Central Iowa's fastest growing plumbing, heating, and cooling companies. I'm proud of what we've accomplished at Holt. Our team is leading the way in providing the latest in home comfort solutions, and we have fun doing it. Our passion is to be the clear first choice for all your plumbing, heating, cooling, and home service needs. At the end of the day, a job well done and a happy customer means everything to us. Just one more reason why more and more Central Iowans are saying, let Holt handle that. Hi, this is Chris from Fireplace Superstore, and if this year is anything like last year, folks are going to be coming in early to get things for their houses. Come in now and beat the rush, and Heat & Glow will help you out with some special promotions on gas inserts. We'll be doing up to $200 off on our gas metal inserts to retrofit into your drafty old wood fireplace. Come early, beat the rush. Fireplace Superstore, 109th and Douglas in Urbandale. Ankeny's only had one offensive possession. But they lead 20 to nothing. A defensive touchdown, a special teams touchdown, and now an offensive touchdown. Colin Cadolf, his first touchdown of the 2021 campaign comes at 251. Max Pelham tees it up at the 40. Back deep is Ray Hall. That kick is high, and it is going to be through the goalpost for a field goal that doesn't matter. Jeff Brooks. A little bit of confusion on that series there on a couple of plays. What else did you see? Well, I just about got that kickoff. I missed it. <laughs> Fumble. No, so, you know, a little bit of holding there. So, Cadolf said, you know what, 18-yard touchdown, ah, I'm going to run it in from 23. Um, boy, I was really surprised. I knew that Ankeny would maybe take a shot that first series, uh, go downfield deep. Man, I wish they would have caught that long touchdown, but... But, you know, the offense got a chance to grind it out and just go down the field. So clean up the penalties and uh, keep marching. And, you know, Waukee really needs to step it up here and answer, though. Waukee down 20 to nothing. Thank you, Jeff Brooks, down on the sideline. 2.51 to go first quarter. Hawk, he'll take it himself, go left side. Put his head down and get a couple of yards, maybe three on that play. Coming up for the Hawks. It was Owen Summers. Not saying this is the worst first quarter walk he could have asked for, but it's probably not something they had uh, drawn up. No, they needed to get their running game going, establish some kind of a ground game to stay in the field. They go counter here with Eddie. He's trying to get to the outside, cuts it up to the 35. He does have the first down, late penalty flag after the tackle by Will Cornwell from his strong safety position. Nice block out there by Kamara. We have a face, face mask, mask on Ankeny is the uh, indication from Michael Hansen. Small variety is incidental. Good pursuit will do that. Nice job by Eddie bouncing it to the outside, taking the you know, they kind of ran that that cross cross route in the backfield. So now that moves the with the penalty all the way up to the 40 yard line. Two minutes to go first quarter. Hawk with it. Eddie. Fumble for a moment, grabs it back. Hawk sidesteps one, jumps over the Yankee defender coming low, way from the back, was Ryan Crandall. Good read by, by Blake Hawk there because uh, Pendergroth was blitzing up the middle, so he knows if he gets the outside and cuts it in, there's one less linebacker out there, so it's a good read by him because there's going to be that open space there. Buck 20 to go for Hawk, second and four. The offense seems to be starting to pick up just a little bit of steam. The give to Eddie, and he is going to be close to that first down, but he's going to be about a yard short. Up four from the defensive end position, Sean Gavin, the tackle. Simonson in there as well, crashing down. More manageable, third and two. 
for Waukee, see what kind of play call they have on, on a short yardage situation. And a good challenge here now for, for Ankeny. They got a short yardage. Defense has to, they can't just pin their ear back, ears back and go. Final 40 seconds of the first quarter. Hawk, third and short. Takes it himself, left side. He's hit behind the line of scrimmage. He'll be well short. Looks like coming up for the tackle, Braden Simonson on the stunt. And it'll be decision time, fourth and short. And Webb Tate came out of his mic position up there, put the first initial hit on there, so it looks like they lost a half a yard at least. Waukee does not have to take a play. Play clock larger than the game clock. Three, two, one. That'll end the first quarter. It's a pick six. It's a punt return, and it's a running touchdown for 20 points for Ankeny. Zero for Waukee. Quarter two next on CISN.TV. D. Armand Ford Indianola are committed to giving you an exceptional ownership experience. As a family-owned business, my dad and I are in the dealership every day to ensure you experience the D. Armand difference. Our core values of hard work, honesty, trust, and integrity are what we build our business on. Experience the difference at the all-new DeArmond Ford Indianola. Where you'll actually enjoy doing business. The all-new DeArmond Ford Indianola. DeArmondFord.com. Hi, this is Chris from Fireplace Superstore, and you've probably noticed there's shortages on most everything in the market today. Well, Heat & Glow has helped us out this year, and they are focusing their energy on their gas fireplace inserts. So if you've got a drafty old wood-burning fireplace and you want to get it retrofitted into a beautiful, high-efficient gas fireplace, come see us. We will have product to sell you. Heat & Glow Gas Fireplace Insert from Fireplace Superstore. 109th and Douglas in Urbandale, just west of Homemakers. Why do I look for the seal? It's about trust. Whether I'm buying a car, hiring a contractor, finding a tax preparer, or an honest mechanic, the Better Business Bureau seal means this business meets high standards. When I see the seal, I know I'll get what I pay for. No more taking chances and no more worries. And I feel good about supporting local businesses. My life is so much easier knowing I can always trust BBB accredited businesses. It pays to look for the seal. See for yourself at bbb.org backslash Iowa. Not really sure we've seen many weird quarters than that tonight. Tim Halber, Jeff Brooks here along with you on CISN.TV. Not the traditional <laughs> mode of scoring have we've seen. Waukee's going to go for it on fourth and three. They're down 20 to nothing. Gabe Baker says, all right, let's go. Or look for a quick kick. Blake Hawk, long snap count. He's looking to draw off that team. Play clock down to three. Two, Baker walks out to the 30, calls timeout. And that is a, uh, our first timeout of the game. We'll step away for 30 seconds. This is high school football. Obsessively, relentlessly. That's what you can always expect, even when faced with the unexpected. It's a service we take seriously providing comfort in the rain, tools to help you save, a helping hand along the way, and from a safe distance away. Delivering the energy you need while going the extra mile. Regardless of the times, our team remains committed to you. Well, just when you think you've seen all the ways that you can score, to uh, not dream it up, but it's still going to be, we've seen it. Let's see what happens now on fourth and three for Waukee. Quick kick ahead or a real play? This is a real play. Hawk back to pass, throws across the middle, and it was caught for a moment but then dropped in his possession. The football was held by Ben Kamara. Would have been enough for a first down, but he's hit, drops the football. Webb Tate delivers a hit, and it'll be a turnover on downs. Ankeny gets the ball back to start in Waukee territory. Jeff Brooks, what do you think here? What uh, what do you see? Well, that was that was a well designed play by Waukee. It was kind of a double. There was a two option pass there for him, but uh, yeah, catch that ball first down. You know what do they have to lose, right? They're down twenty to nothing against a really good Ankeny team. Established something, but now they got to step up on D against this Ankeny offense. So. 
Jeff Brooks on our sideline again this season as we begin the fun. No score between Downing Catholic and Southeast Polk is there in the second quarter as well. Cole throws to his third receiver, Kadolf. A little too much mustard there. Kadolf's body was going left. The pass was to his right. That's an incredibly tough play to make. Yeah, a little behind him, he got he stopped and kind of caught him on the inside shoulder there. But he was open. He felt he was, it was good check down route. Cole looked outside. It, it, it should have went. So um, still a bit of a timing issue here with uh, the quarterback and receivers. Cole, second and ten. They go up Kadolf, left side, gets through one tackler, but not two. First in for Waukee is Ty Boardman. As Kadolf makes his way back to the huddle. Kruger coming back in at tight end, playing more of a slot position, wing back position, H backs, some some will call. Lines up tight. Cole, flush, throws off his back foot. It's a freebie ball. It's going to be eight yards out of bounds, but closing in quick was Lucas Struck. And uh, that's a decision to throw it away, but you got to not leave it hanging in the air to look make like, everybody nervous. Look like Andrew Gillespie was in there as well, putting a rush on, making him throw it much sooner and off his back foot than he wanted to. Cole on fourth and seven. Timeout, Ankeny. The offense not quite synced up yet. They'll talk it over in this timeout. We'll step away. D. Armin Ford Indianola are committed to giving you an exceptional ownership experience. As a family-owned business, my dad and I are in the dealership every day to ensure you experience the D. Armin difference. Our core values of hard work, honesty, trust, and integrity are what we build our business on. Experience the difference at the all-new DeArmond Ford Indianola. Where you'll actually enjoy doing business. The all-new DeArmond Ford Indianola. DeArmondFord.com Hi, I'm Joe the Car Guy with Westside Auto. I'm excited to tell you about our new lifetime oil change plan. When you purchase our plan, you'll never have to pay for an oil change again. If you get a different car, simply transfer the plan over. If that car's oil needs are different than your original plan, just pay the difference. It couldn't be simpler. You won't have to worry about inflation or prices going up. Give us a call at Westside Auto Pros to get details on the lifetime oil change plan. And remember, when I say lifetime, I mean your lifetime, not just your cars. Fourth and seven for the Ankeny Hawks from the Waukee 44. Out of the timeout. Hawks send Ward in motion. Cole dumps it off. Kadolf, he's going to be well short of the first down. He needed seven. He got four. It'll be a turnover on downs. Camara came out there and, and, and did a good tackle, knocking him out of bounds, so shattering him coming up from his um, cornerback position. So, Well, just when I think our game is weird, Waukee Northwest leads Valley 7-5 in the second quarter. Here it's 20 to nothing. Not sure they got the w here the way we did, but we have a whistle as Waukee comes out to the field. I think the officials are checking the exchanging footballs. Got to get the football. Last year, the football protocol or the COVID protocol, we were doing that a lot. We'd have COVID timeouts for sanitizing different things. First down and 10 for Waukee from their 41 11 07. Waukee offense has been getting better each possession. Let's see what Hawk and company do now. Eddie's to his left. Alley goes in motion. Hit as he throws. Incomplete. Up close were Cornwell and Webb Tate. But there was some definite yeah. pressure that came up the middle. Yeah, Webb Tate out there. You know, once again. You know, Blake Hawk, you know, throwing it much sooner there. You know, throwing it in the middle where there was two linebackers waiting to intercept. So, lucky he didn't get a pick there. Play clock down to 10 seconds. Hawk looks to the right. He's got Eddie next to him. Two guys in motion. That'll be a penalty. Yep. 
And Hawk should just go down before he's hit. And he does. Webb Tate hits him. But both uh, Charlie Cross and I think Kamara were moving at the same time. Last I checked, that's a no-no in football. We'll take the penalty because it's playing field position. Tim, early on, what have you know? What have you thought of the Waukee offense? Uh, they're having a hard time getting their passing game going. They may be better off if he could, if Hawk could roll out and do something quicker, get something underneath to get some rhythm there. But as a drop back, he's not exceptionally tall quarterback. He's five ten, and against this larger defensive line, he's going to have a hard time getting the ball out there if he can't step up in the pocket because that's where the pressure is coming from. So, if they could do that to find some rhythm, uh, uh, these. Second and third and longs are not in their, right now in their wheelhouse. Well, they're facing an uphill battle at third and 17 from their own 34. Hawk, here comes some heat, the screen, and coming like a madman with his hair on fire was Jackson Pennyroth. And it'll be fourth down, time to punt for Waukee. That time their offense not clicking at all. Coach Nelson talked about the invisible yards, you know, looking at penalties, field position game, kicking game, where you're winning and losing yards in there. So that was one where they, they had a first down and had a minus six yards. Matthews again into punt, takes a step up, gets it end over end, but a little shorter. It's going to bounce in front of, but not taken by Will Cornwell. But it does flip the field just a little bit back onto the Yankee side of the field. The ball will be placed at about the 34-yard line. And we've placed Jeff Brooks on the sideline, and he's going to check in with the report right now. Right, Jeff? Yeah, hey, uh, so far this quarter is kind of not nearly as uh, exciting as that first quarter started. But I, I tell you what, maybe the defensive is, defenses have both settled in. Um, Waukee's offense really needs to get going, but look for Ankeny here to, to get something going into the wind, establish some run game, and, and maybe a little bit of short passing to, to get down there and, and get into scoring position. Timeout, Ankeny. Coach Adam Booth calls that one. The offensive coordinator, and he calls the offense out. There's not much more that will drive a coach nuts than a uh, timeout after a change of possession, and you could read the body language of Coach Booth up here kind of thinking he was in that same ballpark. Let's take a look at some scores. Uh, last check, Northwest up on Valley, 7-5. That game on CISN.TV on the other field. Now it's 14-5. Uh, Northwest has gone up the first sporting event for the boys for football in Northwest history. No score between Dallas, uh, Dowling Catholic and Southeast Polk. Ames leads Marshalltown 8-7, Indianola 14, Centennial 13. No score, Urbandale, Bettendorf. Next week, Centennial home against Ankeny. Just had a look at the update there. Uh, Max Preps doing it. Uh, Urbandale is up 7-0 at, at Bettendorf, taking the long road trip across the state for an away game, so up 7-0 on the east side of the state. Out of the timeout. The Hawks go in the gun like they do. Cole, the out and up, throws it. Incomplete. Off the fingertips, Will Heinrichs. These passes are moving from Cole. We know about the arm strength of J.J. Cole. We saw it on display last year. College coaches have seen it at camps in the offseason. His teammates in the Hawk uniforms are trying to get that rhythm. Friday night's a lot different than a Tuesday afternoon. They're working through it. Kadolf up the middle, now outside, up, keeps it churning through on a cutback. Gets a little help from his friend named Ryan Mayor. Ryan Mayer. Cameron Johnson there, as well as, uh, looks like maybe Andrew Gillespie was there. Joe Kingston, the, the right tackle there, drove his guy back five yards. That's where they got a lot of the yardage there in that play. So great blocking by the senior. First and 10 from the 44. Cole calls, gets it, goes Kadolf, ripped down, penalty flag far side. Tackle right there by Gillespie, Andrew Gillespie. 
Coach Baker says he's one of those guys that just absolutely gives us his all. It's a false start on Ankeny. So we'll go backwards for Ankeny. Coming up at halftime, we'll talk swimming and diving with Michelle Stout. She is the uh, head swimming and diving coach for the girls, which is a combined program, both Centennial and Ankeny. They've already had a diving meet, and they're getting ready for a meet where they all get to swim against Johnston. We'll hear about that at half. Cadolf, no, that is not Cadolf. That is Johnson. That is Reed Johnson. Reed already scored once. And that's, uh, we, Tim, you kind of had talked about mixing in. Maybe it's just not Cadolf all the time. Right. And you give, him a, give him a break there because he's going to be a workhorse. It's a warm night. Um, Reed gives him a nice change of pace. Did a nice job of picking his hole there, but, you know, where the hole was, back and forth, just took it up the middle, um, gained a lot of those yards back, bringing up a second and eight. 20 0, 9 2. Cole on second down. Looks to the left, keeps it locked, throws it high in the air. He's got a guy with a step, and it's in the hands. It's a matter if he's inbounds, and he is! Catch on the far sideline for the Yankee Hawks. Maddox Ward. Coaches have said he has had a good fall, and he comes up with a great catch on that far sideline. Big pickup for the Hawks down into the territory of Waukee, gain of 32 yards. And he dropped that in a bucket, you know, between the corner and the safety over there. Um, Maddox got a little outside shoulder there, went up the sideline, went up the ladder there and, and hauled it in. Up the middle, go back to the run game for a gain of four, almost five. Reed Johnson, the last guy off the turf for Waukee is Sonny Salkick. Sonny, we don't hear coaches rave about freshmen like we heard Coach Baker rave about Salkick. Said he's the strongest guy we have in the program, and he's a freshman. And he just jumped off sides. Way to go, kid. Sonny there. He heard us talking about him. He's yep. like, hey, I need you to set that up a little bit more. Why am I good? Now you have more time to talk. Yeah. I think Coach Booth is going to want to get this offense, maybe get the tempo up a little bit, uh, get the guy, get the offense going, uh, coming in, get the plays out of the sidelines. That, too, is a timing issue. As plays coming in from the sideline to the quarterback, you get him in quickly with, without having to exchange players, but they can read the, the play call. 8.14, clock moving. Maddox Ward goes left to right, gets into that slot position, and I think Ankeny calls a timeout, and they do. Coach Booth burns another one. We'll step away. 20 0, Ankeny. Plumbing and Heating continues to be one of Central Iowa's fastest growing plumbing, heating, and cooling companies. I'm proud of what we've accomplished at Holt. Our team is leading the way in providing the latest in home comfort solutions, and we have fun doing it. Our passion is to be the clear first choice for all your plumbing, heating, cooling, and home service needs. But at the end of the day, a job well done and a happy customer means everything to us. Just one more reason why more and more Central Iowans are saying, let Holt handle that. Hi, this is Chris from Fireplace Superstore, and if this year is anything like last year, folks are going to be coming in early to get things for their houses. Come in now and beat the rush, and Heat & Glow will help you out with some special promotions on gas inserts. We'll be doing up to $200 off on our gas metal inserts to retrofit into your drafty old wood fireplace. Come early, beat the rush. Fireplace Superstore, 109th and Douglas in Urbandale. Out of the timeout, Ankeny will have the football. First and 10, ball on the Waukee 12. This is the offensive series Coach Booth's been looking for all game. He called another timeout. They're down to one. You can't take them into the locker room. If it's not working, talk it over. They do. Let's see what they do out of this play. Cole gives it, and it's a, a false start. I think Ankeny was moving. Something. I think Cole called for it, and this ball just did not arrive. And it'll be against the Hawks. So the penalties is one thing, Coach Nelson. I remember last year, Tim, he would talk and talk and talk about penalties. Yes, because it's it, it does nothing happens, the clock doesn't run, but you lose yardage, you lose your field position here. And it, it starts to take you out of field goal position. Uh, they're still in good shape here inside the 20. First and 15. 
The give to Johnson, goes left, now cuts out to the right. He's hit by Gillespie. And finish off, Peyton Betts comes up, the junior. Betts, one of those guys that knows this defense. It's a new defense that uh, the Warriors are putting in there. Cohill Carter has been around a lot of programs. He's been in the Canadian Football League, the Arena Football League, and now he's coaching this defense. And Coach Baker says it's his. Cadolf, left side, gets to the outside, cuts it back in along that sideline. He's close to the goal line, he's and he's in! Colin Cadolf, 12 yards and a score. Something more traditional. And the Hawks are going to go for two after they had the missed PAT on a bad snap. You know how it is when you mention everybody involved in the play. It's when something goes awry. This is good practice, too. There will be times you need these uh, points. Double tight end set. Kadolf up the middle is going to try to take his way in. He was hit well before the goal line. And this time he is going to get in. He was hit two or three yards in the backfield, but his knee didn't go down the, de the defender. He drug him in, took him in. Good surge there. Kept his legs extended, 28-0. Back in a moment. D. Arm and Ford Indianola are committed to giving you an exceptional ownership experience. As a family-owned business, my dad and I are in the dealership every day to ensure you experience the D. Arm and difference. Our core values of hard work, honesty, trust, and integrity are what we build our business on. Experience the difference at the all-new D. Arm and Ford Indianola. Where you'll actually enjoy doing business. The all-new DeArmond Ford Indianola. DeArmondFord.com. Hi, I'm Joe the Car Guy with Westside Auto. I'm excited to tell you about our new lifetime oil change plan. When you purchase our plan, you'll never have to pay for an oil change again. If you get a different car, simply transfer the plan over. If that car's oil needs are different than your original plan, just pay the difference. It couldn't be simpler. You won't have to worry about inflation or prices going up. Give us a call at Westside Auto Pros to get details on the lifetime oil change plan. And remember, when I say lifetime, I mean your lifetime, not just your cars. Here's how that last touchdown looked. Kadolf was lined up next to Cole. They go to that left side. They kind of flooded it, and then Kadolf got back by one into the other and then just snuck inside that pylon for the score. Pelham kicks it off deep, but it's going to be fielded at the 12-yard line by Waukee. And that's going to be a host of Ankeny tacklers. Eddie, the return of about eight yards. And let's see, who's the last one off the pile is... Leo Aguilar is there? Uh, yeah, no, Leo and uh, Ryan Crandall. Let's go down. Jeff Brooks is on our sideline. Jeff, what do you know? Yeah, I'm just going to call him no quit Cadal from now on because both those... The two-point conversion and the touchdown, he, he was hit well before the goal line on both of those occasions, and it was he, he was not going to be denied, no doubt about it. So uh, that young man's going to have a great year. He's having a great game now. Um, gosh, I, I heard you talking during the break. Waukee really needs to get something happening here just for self-confidence. Kadolf, seven carries, 72 yards. Waukee passing zero yards, 23 yards rushing. So there's some of that offense. And as soon as you call zero, oh, off the hands. They were going for Ray Hall, incomplete. Nate Nessa on there on the coverage, hitting him as soon as the ball got there. 7.13 to go. Clock stops on the incomplete pass. Let's see for passing. It is six attempts. 0 for 6 are the Warriors here in this first half. Hand off Eddie. Eddie goes right side. Cuts it back in before Diego Jackson slowed him. Sean Gavin finished. 
Jackson Penningroth wanted in for partial credit. I understand the need to pass on first down because you're going to get the best coverage and the most single coverage on a first down play. But if you're not successful, it brings up that second and long. Now there's you know even a good play there. Now it's third and third and seven. From the 26, Hawk runs under the coverage and is met about a yard past the line of scrimmage and doesn't get any farther. Gavin, Simonson, Webb Tate, Crandall. A lot of the starters on defense all have those single numbers. If you look at everybody, you know, one, three, four, five, seven. <laughs> all those older guys wanted those small numbers. Back to punt again, Matthews. Low liner, it's got a nice uh, carry on it, taken back at the 35 yard line. Turning it to the near side. And going along that sideline is Brody McCullough. McCullough had a pass go through his hands earlier. So there he gets some positive yards. That's a return of about almost 22 yards. Ryan Joseph there coming up to, to force them to the outside, force them out at the 43-yard line. Nice return there, giving the ball back to, to Ankin. Five thirty-nine to go, first half. Ankeny 28, Waukee 0. Handoff, Kadolf left side. Kadolf gets through the, uh, the line. It's been pretty easy for Ankeny to get past that line of scrimmage tonight on many, many plays. Been a lot of gains of 10, 11 yards for Kadolf. That's good blocking up front on that offensive line. Kadolf again. He gets to the outside now. And he's upended right about the first down. And that's a tackle by Peyton Betts. And we do have a penalty flag down at about the 28, and it's against Ankeny. That's who was holding. I know Ryan Mayer, the center, got out there double team with Masivas, who is a, another new student here to the school. Um, then Ethan Thomas out there. The whole left side got their blocks on there. They can't tell what the penalty was. But they always call holding, right? You know, they, these guys make good blocks. And if you're not holding, you're not trying. Right. Well, Joe Kingston and Anthony Espino are the anchors of that line. They're back again. Cole with time to throw. Gets it away. And Kadolf got a left hand on it, but not the left and the right. Incomplete. And it's been a little tougher to go for passing. And Cole is yet, he's completed. Hold on, I gotta read four for 44. Not quite the start that Cole had in mind, but hey, they're working it out. That is a handoff up the middle. And it's Kadolf. Cameron Johnson there for Waukee to make the stop. Nice job on there. Kruger's in there at tight end, bringing in a lot of blocking, and he does a, a really good job in there. It looks like they're going to like a, a – uh, the other receiver he's here on the strong side using as they, they would refer to that as 11 personnel. They got to get Ward in motion. They send him three, two, one. Got to snap the ball and they get it off after the play clock had expired. Three coaches on the near side were saying snap the ball. So that'll be against Ankeny. 
If you're going to take anything away, if you're Ankeny, from what to work on from week one to two, Tim, what do you think it would be? I think it's play time. I think there's a little bit too long looking there and then trying to find the right read. And then the they start the play too late. You know, they're trying to get guys in motion across the formation to see where the safety is going to go and see where the formation is going to go. It's taking too much time, to, especially after a running play, the clock continues to run. Reed Johnson left side. Cuts it back to the 30. He's going to be short of the first down after he's brought down by double nickel Morris Kone. That is a good time to go for it on fourth down to see what you got for a fourth down play. Is a fourth and six. And you'd be kicking it into that win if you were trying to kick a field goal, which would be at least a 48-yard field goal. So you're not going to do that. Johnson gets the call, left side. He is hit before the first down, and he just doesn't have enough second effort to get up there. He has stopped. Let's Coming up Kamara. is Kamara and Peyton Betts to make the stop for Waukee. I'm sure the coaches have noticed this, but Kamara, on some plays, is spying in on the tailback and plays like that they think they're going to run. He's up there. He's usually making the tackle on the tailback. The last touchdown by Kadolf. He was forced out wide playing his corner position, vacating that. So I think it's something to watch for as their, their scouting is that wherever he goes, he's not keying on the running back, which may free up the running game. 28 nothing Ankeny leads, but Waukee has the football again. Two timeouts to go. They're at their own 33-yard line. Hawk with Eddie. Hawk throws it. Caught. And still on his feet, heading into the secondary. And then some. Dalton. Base. And we have, I think we have a penalty. We're all looking around at the referee. Ineligible. Illegal. Oh, an eligible receiver downfield. So wipe off that uh, reception. To base. As Dalton Bay uh, uh, caught that. Ran that they called skinny post, came across the middle. It's on that inside seam. It was a good pass and catch. That's there's more than on there. And, and passing on first down, you get a better look. You do the the defense is a little more base. Usually get single coverage back there. So that play wiped off, taken back five yards to the twenty three yard line so it'll be first and 15 from the 23 the clock starts now good play call just a little excited to get downfield Hawks gonna keep it run still going right side coming up Penningroth it was a gain of about 10. Problem is you needed 15 for the first down. So it'll be second down and four. Good pick up there after the penalty. Hawk, Eddie. Eddie stood up. I think that was Simonson right there. Simonson there. Gavin. And Webb Tate. Simonson, you remember, Tim, played offense two years ago. He's now in his yeah. second year of defense. He really excels on this defensive side of the ball. That's got some height. he got some length on him. So, But he's moved around a little bit. I think he's found his position here at defensive end where he can really, really key and use his athleticism. Hawk, first receiver not there, runs. And he is going to be hit, fumble, picked up, picked up, and going to score a touchdown all the way in, tamed him. Webb Tate on the hit. Scoop and score. We're going to have an excessive penalty, or at least a penalty flag thrown at the goal line. Unsportsmanlike on Ankeny. I think when he raises the ball running into the end zone, that you typically is going to get unsportsmanlike. Score should count. It's just going to, I think they can force it either on this kick or on the kickoff. Was that Eaton on the. The quarterback hit? I missed on the hit. I was watching the quarterback and missed who hit him. Yeah. 
So penalty be enforced on the kickoff. Looks like they're taking it here. So it'll go all the way back here. Ankeny will have a little extra work. They've gone to the halftime locker rooms. Waukee Northwest up 14-5 on Valley. Good to have those of you watching us tonight in the garage. Maybe you're in the basement with air conditioning tonight instead of the garage. Maybe the garage is later on in the season. We have a late score here, right, you know, first quarter. Urbandale up 13-0 on Bettendorf. As we sort through all of this, it's finally going to be a 35-yard extra point attempt for Pelham. So if anything, this is to see what Pelham's leg is like when you need him for that distance. Kick is high enough, and it's good. 35-0. Ankeny has the lead. 1.42 to play here in the second quarter. DRM and Ford Indianola are committed to giving you an exceptional ownership experience. As a family owned business, my dad and I are in the dealership every day to ensure you experience the DRM difference. Our core values of hard work, honesty, trust, and integrity are what we build our business on. Experience the difference at the all new DRM and Ford Indianola, where you'll actually enjoy doing business. The all new DRM and Ford Indianola, DRMandFord.com. Hi, I'm Joe the Car Guy with Westside Auto. I'm excited to tell you about our new lifetime oil change plan. When you purchase our plan, you'll never have to pay for an oil change again. If you get a different car, simply transfer the plan over. If that car's oil needs are different than your original plan, just pay the difference. It couldn't be simpler. You won't have to worry about inflation or prices going up. Give us a call at Westside Auto Pros to get details on the lifetime oil change plan. And remember, when I say lifetime, I mean your lifetime, not just your cars. Let's see that uh, hit again. And Hawk is running, and yeah, he is just hit at the 20. Webb Tate picks it up and scores. Oh, he spiked the ball. That's what he did, Tim. He spiked the ball. That wasn't the hand in the air. You didn't see the flags come out until after he spiked it. Webb Tate's not in the NFL yet. No. 35 nothing. Pelham puts a leg into it at the 40. High kick. It's going to be taken by Hall at the 8. 15, and he's popped once, and then's not going to go no further than the 15. Hall did not win the low man competition, and the tackle was Xander Kenworthy. Jeff Brooks, what do you know? Well, if I saw correctly, the hit on the quarterback for that fumble recovery touchdown was by Braden Simonson, I believe. And it was that spike. Yeah, he spiked the ball. It was a pretty good spike, though, you got to admit. <laughs> it, it had some good air on it, um, and the kid doesn't score touchdowns. That might be his first maybe since he was in peewee football. So why not spike it, right? Well, if you're up this much, I suppose, but if it's a closer game, that might get an earful. So Hawk back out to work. Under two minutes to go. Eddie to the right side, staying in bounds. Brought down on that far sideline. Will Cornwell. We will not be able to, we will not be showing the band tonight on the halftime stream. But uh, we are going to try to work through some of those logistics. We hope to have a halftime where we talk through the show later on this season. Hawk's going to throw it. The ball is tipped by Braden Simonson. I think Hawk is going to have nightmares at number 10. 
Clock keeps moving, and that is going to be how the first half is going to end because of the 35-point rule. I don't think Waukee's going to take a snap. So Jeff is going to find head coach Rick Wilson, and uh, we'll try to get a couple of comments from there, but 35 nothing. It has been all Ankeny in this ball game. Colin cut off two touchdowns. Webb Tate, a touchdown. Reed Johnson, a pick six. A, uh, you name it, we've had it in this game. Punt return for a Punt touchdown? return for a score, which was Simonson, right? Simonson, yes. Yeah. So he scored all over the place. And uh, as the band makes their way on, Coach is going to be one of the last ones off the field. <laughs> <laughs> we have a score, Roosevelt up over uh, Des Moines East, 13 nothing here towards the end of the second quarter. Say that score again. 13 nothing Roosevelt over East. Roosevelt over East, okay. New coach there at Roosevelt, new coach at Ames. Here, uh, our coach Nelson is getting a drink of water. I see where he is at <laughs> as, the, as Jeff. <laughs> Jeff's got that poor assignment of, oh, you kidding me? I have to go bug him at the... At the water cooler? Now, Betty's not happy with all the penalties, and the mis- he may have a few things to uh, They'll. Uh, Jeff will make his way there. Maybe Coach Nelson thought if I stay here long enough, he'll miss me. 35 nothing. Ankeny in the lead over Waukee. Rick Nelson and Jeff Brooks will walk and talk. Let's go down to Jeff. Hey, I'm here with Coach Nelson. Coach, hey, first half, you know, you, you got it through you. Um, Talk to me a little bit. First off, defensive effort. What do you think of that? Oh, well, they've scored all of our points. So, <laughs> offensively, we're uh, we're not very good right now. We got a long road ahead of us to be a good offense. So, what's your? How do you get through that? I mean, you managed to get through Cadolf. Talk to me a little bit about your running backs. Both of them have done really well when they had that we opportunity. Run the ball. We can't throw it uh, very good at all. So it's uh, pathetic to watch right now. Penalties. I think last year we talked one of the games. You said penalties, penalties, penalties to me, if I remember. How do, are you just talk to cleaning that up? Or? Well, we, we don't even know our formations. That would be a start. If our kids know our formations, that might be a help. All right, Coach. Hey, thanks for the time. All right. Head Coach Rick Nelson and Jeff Brooks. The band is on the field. We'll step away. Michelle Stout will talk swimming and diving in a moment here on CISN.TV. Halftime, Ankeny 35 Waukee, zero. This is high school football on CISN.TV. Obsessively, relentlessly. That's what you can always expect, even when faced with the unexpected. It's a service we take seriously, providing comfort in the rain, tools to help you save, a helping hand along the way, and from a safe distance away, delivering the energy you need while going the extra mile. Regardless of the times, our team remains committed to you. Who loves you, Iowa? Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee does. Intent. Plumbing and Heating continues to be one of Central Iowa's fastest growing plumbing, heating, and cooling companies. I'm proud of what we've accomplished at Holt. Our team is leading the way in providing the latest in home comfort solutions, and we have fun doing it. Our passion is to be the clear first choice for all your plumbing, heating, cooling, and home service needs. At the end of the day, a job well done and a happy customer means everything to us. Just one more reason why more and more Central Iowans are saying, let Holt handle that obsessively, relentlessly. That's what you can always expect, even when faced with the unexpected. It's a service we take seriously, providing comfort in the rain, tools to help you save, a helping hand along the way, and from a safe distance away, delivering the energy you need while going the extra mile. Regardless of the times, our team remains committed to you.
Joining us now at halftime, Michelle Stout, head swimming and diving coach for the combined Ankeny and Centennial team. And coach, here we go uh, on the deck. What, 5 a.m.? What time did you have practice this morning? Um, this morning, it's a double practice. Most of our practices are twice a day. So we were in the water from 6 to oh, about 7.15 or so. Then we'll hop, so about an hour and 15 practice. This afternoon, we'll hop back in for two to two and a half hour practice again. So who is uh, starting to emerge as uh, some people we need to be looking for on this team? Well, you know, we have, I think we'll have a really um, good diverse group of kids. And as we look at, you know, all the different events that um, can happen during a meet that do happen during a meet. I mean, I can see right now, I'm real excited about our sophomore breaststroker, um, Anya Peck. Um, I know she has high goals. Uh, she's, I can see a broken school record coming from her in the 100 breaststroke this season. Uh, I know that in terms of diving, uh, Erica Peters, you know, was a podium. She had a podium finish last year in diving, and she's hungry to, to reach up higher on that podium this year as a senior. And if I remember correctly, Anya is double doing, right? I mean, last year she did cross country and swimming. Is she doing the same thing this year? She is. She is. And so, uh, you know, we, we share her and, and she seems to tolerate that heavy workload because it is a heavy load um, to be a dual sport athlete, both in the same season, plus, um, the plus a full load at school. What, uh, when is our first meet or have we already had it? There was a diving invitational on Monday. So there were a number of teams there, Dowling, Southeast Polk, Boone. Um, a number of teams were at that um, and could bring um, a full diving squad. And uh, Erica, you know, pretty much ran away with that. Uh, she placed basically um, at the same, you know, close to the same points, a little higher actually, to the point she scored last year at the state meet at the end of the season. Um, then our next two girls finished third and sixth out of the whole pool of athletes from all the schools. So one, three, six, that's a great start for diving. Um, now we'll have a full dual meet on Tuesday. And who will, who will that be against? You know, they'll be Johnston and they are um, just a really good, well-rounded squad, um, great swimmers. And so there'll be a lot of great races at that meet. Uh, so are you still trying to figure out who goes in relays yet? I mean, if you haven't really had a full swim meet, I mean, you can guess on some practice things, but are relays starting to take shape for you? Well, let, let me back up a little bit and say that um, this is a week for us that has had a lot of test sets. So yesterday, you know, it was a big test set to determine, um, you know, let's start grouping some kids together, uh, you know, by where they're at right now. You know, what are they able to tolerate? What's their fitness level right now? So we can take some initial steps toward that. Friday's a time trial. Okay, so we'll be recording times. It'll be like a little mini swim meet. And from that, um, you know, based on um, what I know about the kids, uh, we'll start developing relays. But I will tell you that, you know, generally I don't slot kids. So let's see what happens. We have a lot of meets, one or two every week, one or two every week. So we have a lot of opportunities to try kids at different events. Um, you know, also to, to test their, you know, you know, how close can we put their the events together? So to, to have them recover and be ready to compete again. So, you know, luckily we have a, such a long season and so many meets to be able to make those determinations. So the first meets just kind of, um, you know, a, a starting point, a starting point. That is good. So we hit you up so early this year, hard to get everybody in, but uh, we will keep watching. Uh, how uh, the swimming and diving team goes. Michelle Stout, thank you so very much for the time and good luck this season. Thank you so much. Our team at DRM and Ford Indianola are committed to giving you an exceptional ownership experience. As a family owned business, my dad and I are in the dealership every day to ensure you experience the DRM difference. Our core values of hard work, honesty, trust, and integrity are what we build our business on. Experience the difference at the all-new DeArmond Ford Indianola. Where you'll actually enjoy doing business. The all-new DeArmond Ford Indianola. DeArmondFord.com Hi, I'm Joe the Car Guy with Westside Auto. I'm excited to tell you about our new lifetime oil change plan. When you purchase our plan, you'll never have to pay for an oil change again. If you get a different car, simply transfer the plan over. 
If that car's oil needs are different than your original plan, just pay the difference. It couldn't be simpler. You won't have to worry about inflation or prices going up. Give us a call at Westside Auto Pros to get details on the Lifetime Oil Change Plan. And remember, when I say lifetime, I mean your lifetime, not just your cars. Hi, this is Chris from Fireplace Superstore, and you've probably noticed there's shortages on most everything in the market today. Well, Heat & Glow has helped us out this year, and they are focusing their energy on their gas fireplace inserts. So if you've got a drafty old wood-burning fireplace, and you want to get it retrofitted into a beautiful, high-efficient gas fireplace, come see us. We will have product to sell you. Heat & Glow Gas Fireplace Insert from Fireplace Superstore, 109th and Douglas in Urbandale, just west of Homemakers. Why do I look for the seal? It's about trust. Whether I'm buying a car, hiring a contractor, finding a tax preparer, or an honest mechanic, the Better Business Bureau seal means this business meets high standards. When I see the seal, I know I'll get what I pay for. No more taking chances and no more worries. And I feel good about supporting local businesses. My life is so much easier knowing I can always trust BBB accredited businesses. It pays to look for the seal. See for yourself at bbb.org backslash Iowa. Waukee zero. He's Tim Halbert. I'm Paul Yeager. Jeff Brooks is around here somewhere. He's looking for Coach Gabe Baker. I mean, Coach Baker's thinking of his uh, debut as the Waukee coach right now. Uh, rough start there. I think the offense never got off the off the side there. Then they they gave up two quick touchdowns before the offense even took the field for for Ankeny. So that's a hard one to get out of, it. especially with that defense. They kept, they started putting their ears back, and then it's a really tough way to make some yards. But if you take away the pick six, the one-yard punt return for a touchdown, the hit, scoop, and score, that's 21 points. It's a 14-0 game. You heard Coach Nelson coming off the field. I don't think they're celebrating a 35-0 lead right now in the Ankeny locker room. No, Coach talked that it's pretty sloppy out there. Uh, they aren't getting the plays in. The bur burning timeouts basically coming off, you know, uh, exchange of uh, a dial and so they need to get that in to get the plays in quicker the offense just looks a little sporadic the passing game's not sharp yet so there's still a lot of things to work on that they can you know explore in the second half so if you're Ankeny you look at a couple of statistics you've got about 134 yards of offense if you walk key you've got zero yards passing for only hold on I, I didn't write down on my cheat sheet I think it's 29 yards of offense. Waukee has got to find a way to somehow run, throw the ball. Coach Baker told us this week, he says, we got to be the Hayden Fry scratch where it itches. We'd love to run the ball, but... Uh, they're finding if they're going to pass it all, it's going to be on first down because they get the single coverage. They had a completion there earlier. Um, the quarterback probably needs to run a little bit more. If he's going to pass... He's five foot ten. I mentioned he may need to do some rollouts and try something short underneath, get four or five yards of the passing game, take a little bit of a pressure off the running game, and then gets into the third and shorts, the, the third and thirteens, and that they're not going to make, make any first downs. All right, we still have plenty of time here at halftime, but uh, we need to let you know that there are other games going on, and let's do a quick check of those. Uh, Waukee Northwest. Leeds Valley 14-5 at half. Roosevelt 14-0 uh, over East at the half. But the game of the night is Southeast Polk Dowling. That is 7-0 Rams over Dowling Catholic. First game's hard for a number of reasons. Those scores kind of tell me it's 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 been tough. So looks like both coaches are probably filling each other out to kind of see where they are defensively, offensively, what plays are going to work. They're going to re what you come out at halftime, what you're going to do. Southeast Polk, you know, with the score there. See if they can keep that. There's potentially a high potent offense for Dowling. Can they keep them under wraps and not get, get into the ball game? Indianola leads Centennial 28-13. Centennial has their home opener next week against Ankeny in the Crosstown rival where we'll see just as many people here, if not more, for that contest. Great stands. Uh, the stand's full of people tonight. They're getting a chance to see high school football again. But, Tim, there is, there is a little question mark about maybe what we're seeing tonight is there are a lot of juniors that have missed out on a lot of prep time to be ready for tonight, and it's exposed. That is going to be a theory of week one, two, and maybe even to week three of this high school season of guys that just didn't get all the opportunities to get ready for varsity football. Do you buy into that theory? 
Yes, because you can't replicate that in practice. You can go through games. You missed some games last year. But the biggest change that happened between game one and game two, you're going to see guys that, that one game experience is a, is a huge factor because you know how to warm up. You know how the butterflies are going to work. Things are become second nature to you again. So that's when your young guys are going to, you know, the seniors are doing a very good job here. The players thought they would make plays are doing it. But the young guys are kind of picking up on that. So you should see them settle down more in that second game. Game one of nine for the season. you got to make the most happen. We'll take a break. Jeff Brooks will find Coach Baker. We'll have a conversation when we return. This is High School Football. Ankeny leads Waukee 35 nothing. Back in a moment. Hey, I'm Joe the Car Guy with Westside Auto. I'm excited to tell you about our new lifetime oil change plan. When you purchase our plan, you'll never have to pay for an oil change again. If you get a different car, simply transfer the plan over. If that car's oil needs are different than your original plan, just pay the difference. It couldn't be simpler. You won't have to worry about inflation or prices going up. Give us a call at Westside Auto Pros to get details on the lifetime oil change plan. And remember, when I say lifetime, I mean your lifetime, not just your cars. Hi, this is Chris from Fireplace Superstore, and if this year is anything like last year, folks are going to be coming in early to get things for their houses. Come in now and beat the rush, and Heat and Glow will help you out with some special promotions on gas inserts. We'll be doing up to $200 off on our gas metal inserts to retrofit into your drafty old wood fireplace. Come early, beat the rush. Fireplace Superstore, 109th and Douglas in Urbandale. Why do I look for the seal? It's about trust. Whether I'm buying a car, hiring a contractor, finding a tax preparer, or an honest mechanic, the Better Business Bureau seal means this business meets high standards. When I see the seal, I know I'll get what I pay for. No more taking chances and no more worries. And I feel good about supporting local businesses. My life is so much easier knowing I can always trust BBB accredited businesses. It pays to look for the seal. See for yourself at bbb.org backslash Iowa. Our team at DRM and Ford Indianola are committed to giving you an exceptional ownership experience. As a family-owned business, my dad and I are in the dealership every day to ensure you experience the DRM difference. Our core values of hard work, honesty, trust, and integrity are what we build our business on. Experience the difference at the all-new DRM and Ford Indianola. Where you'll actually enjoy doing business. The all-new DRM and Ford Indianola. DRM and Ford. Waukee 35, or trails 35 nothing over Ankeny. The crowd was just cheering. It's a good student section and good community group, and they'll be out in force next week for the Crosstown rivalry between Ankeny and Centennial. You'll see that game, but the crew will be a little bit different as uh, we work through things. Uh, let's take a look here as uh, Jeff Brooks is on that far sideline. He is looking for Coach Baker. When he gets him, he'll uh, interrupt me, and uh, I'll tell you, that Waukee is zero for uh, they've zero for seven passing for zero yards. It has been a tough go. No yards passing, 29 yards rushing on 19 carries. Eddie has 10 carries for 19 yards. Hawk seven carries, 11 yards. It has been uh, tough sledding, but uh, there has been some moments where Waukee is is showing some life. And uh, Jeff Brooks is now with uh, Coach Baker on that far sideline far side for this report. Jeff? Hey, Coach. Um, boy, probably not the start you wanted for the season, but, but you're here. So what was the message for the boys at halftime? You know, we can't control what happened in that first half. That's done and over with. All we can't control for the rest of our season and what kind of season we want is what's going to happen in the next 24 minutes. So I asked our kids, the way this season's going to go is going to happen right now in this second half. Good. So defensively, I, I saw a lot of good stuff on defense. I mean, you, you held them in check. and They got a couple of offensive production, but for the most part, you did well. What can you say about your defense? No, our defense has been flying around, keeping them between about three, four, five-yard plays, and, and we're flying to the ball. It's not been perfect, but you know that's kind of the way football goes. Kind of shot ourselves in the foot with three non-offensive touchdowns by them, and that's hard to come back from. Yeah, it is, Coach. So offensively, how do you get that production going? Uh, we, we, I thought we had a chance there with kind of a 20, 25-yard play and got called back for an illegal formation. Uh, but we just need some of those plays to get us going, get some first downs, and try to put some points on the board here. All right. Thanks for your time, Coach. Head Coach Kate Baker and Jeff Brooks. Thank you, Jeff, for that report. Colin Cadolf, 10 carries, 91 yards. He has two touchdowns. Reed Johnson, 5 carries, 29 yards. 
Ward, two catches, 41. Kadolf, one catch, three. 11, four of 11 passing for 44 yards. Cole's passes have had a lot of zip. Guys have been a little bit, uh, maybe a little off balance a couple of times, so it's not been perfect scenario. This game's hard to play at this level. Highest class, Tim. It's not easy. There's good athletes on both sides. It's, it's a timing issue. The windows are a lot smaller on here. He's got, he definitely has the arm. It's just the timing. You're off a yard. You're throwing on the inside shoulder. The guy's expecting the outside shoulder. This will come, and then you can't replicate that in practice. So the, there's a game speed out there. You're sweating a little bit. Pulse rate goes up a little bit. You, you, try to, you try to make some things happen. When he steps into the ball, when he just throws it, he throws a really nice ball. I think when he tries to put too much touch on it, he had a really nice touch down the sideline there. Uh, earlier, so I think he's going to have to settle in a little bit. I think he's going to do that. He's got a lot of talent there. I think the timing route against his team will probably they'll probably throw a little bit here in the second half to kind of get his his feedback under him something quick. It is one thing to play the position and change teams, get used to guys that you might not have played catch with. You probably knew them. Maybe they were on a travel baseball team, basketball, football. Bonding is is not in question. You heard Coach Nelson say it, how uh, told a story about J.J. at a baseball game this summer and how the, he looked over and all of a sudden his whole football team was around J.J. And they just – so that side of the game, now it's got to be that really hard, like you said, the speed, the sweat, the, the emotion of this game. That kind of stuff I think they can work out, right? He's just practicing getting used to it in game of speed. He's had a couple of snaps where he just kind of not grabbed the handle on, on it right away. Uh, to show how much the guys respect him, he's elected captain and he's a junior. So it tells you how much, and he's a, a new to the school here, uh, it tells you how much they respect him. So I think he's going to straighten out pretty quickly. There's Coach Booth talking to his squad right now. Ankeny should receive the ball since they kicked off to start the game. 35-0 is our score as we get ready for half number two. The kick return team comes out. The kickoff team comes for Waukee. Tim Halber, Jeff Brooks, Paul Yeager along with you here. Half number two. Jeff Martins is here. Randy and Reese and Devin on our crew tonight. It uh, hasn't gotten much cooler. The wind has died down just a little bit. But uh, it is still a warm August night. Uh, we are at 85 degrees. The wind has died down to about 7 miles an hour. And that kick is high by Max Bartacek, and it is a touchback, and it'll be a first and 10 from the 20. So, Jeff Brooks, I know we didn't have a score to talk about, but you had a chance to talk to both coaches. What's your assessment of what both of them said after the first half? Well, first off, you know, I think that, Coach Baker um, has a really good point. You know, they're coming. They're coming basically brand new into all this. What you know, it's like flashback to what seven, eight, ten years ago for Ankeny and Centennial. You know, there's a lot of growing and a lot of learning to do. Coach Nelson wants perfection. This is the top three team in the state. He wants them to perform like that right out of the gate. So you know, there's different expectations for both teams. Carson Booth drops the pass from Cole, was right there on the hands. He had turned up field before. Yes, Jeff, he does want perfection. And, Tim, uh, that is something that when you have a program that is a state champion, your expectations are high. And you're going to get team's best game coming at you because you are the defending state champs. Reed Johnson, the handoff, follows one blocker, gets up towards the 25-yard line before... He stopped, stopped by Aiden Bright's butcher. Kingston out there leading the blocking. Osivas is out there also leading the blocking, so uh, creating a nice hole out there. Kingston and Espino returners. Espino elected captain. Espino a three-year starter on that offensive line. Cole looks to the left side, throws. It's caught. McCullough shakes a... One defender and then tries to extend the play about eight more yards after the catch. McCullough, Ben Camara will get credit for that tackle. It'll be a first down move the chains, and that might just open things up a little bit more for the Hawks. Struck had a game-saving or touchdown-saving tackle out there in the open field. Otherwise, I think that McCullough would have gone to the end zone. 
35-0, nothing, 9.55 to play third quarter. Cole calls for it, looks to the left side, throws it. Caught McCullough, far sideline, McCullough dances. Another eight yards after the catch. He's sent out of bounds by Bright's Butcher again. They're going to give it a gain of eight up to about the 40, uh, 48-yard line. Getting the, the pass plays out there quickly, short routes underneath, get the receivers, kind of gets a zip on it, find his rhythm down there. Three-step drop, really not a three-step drop. He's already back in the backfield, but getting the ball out quickly. Make it nine, second and one. Colin Cadal busts through. He's hardly touched, makes one cut back, makes another down to the 30-yard line. 22-yard pickup, Colin Cadal. Derek Johnson out there, his wide receiver position, leading the way, causing some interference. Smart blocking, not blocking in the back. That's so easily done out there when you're in, in an open space like that. Kept his hands in, didn't hold anybody. Positive yardage, first down. Maddox Ward and McCullough go to the left side. Reed Johnson next to J.J. Cole. Snap of the ball. Cole looks, throws right, caught. Near sideline, up towards the uh, 15, about the 18-yard line. It's a pickup for the Hawks by Derek Johnson on the reception. So another receiver getting into the mix. Kruger's been open, running up that seam, you know, right on the hash marks there. Look for something. He's going straight downfield. He, they're not, not catching him, so look for him to be open soon. Reed Johnson, left side. Cuts it out. He's at the 10, the 5, the race to the pylon. Touchdown! Reed Johnson, the 17-yard scamper over left tackle. And Reed Johnson has a varsity touchdown. Good dinged up lineman there. Two good blocks. Brady McCullough out there coming back as receiver blocking. And also Ryan Mayer going out there, kicking his guy outside. Two great blocks that set up that touchdown. Drew Monsevice, the lineman, is the one that's shaken up, and he comes off the field. His helmet came off, so he comes out. Pelham will be on to attempt the extra point. That was a pretty efficient drive for the Hawks. I think that's what they were looking to do in the first half, and uh, that one goes 80 yards, and it was pretty simple. And that extra point is good. 42 0. Ankeny with the lead. 8 04 to play, third quarter. Excessively, relentlessly. That's what you can always expect, even when faced with the unexpected. It's a service we take seriously, providing comfort in the rain, tools to help you save, a helping hand along the way, and from a safe distance away. Delivering the energy you need while going the extra mile. Regardless of the times, our team remains committed to you. Who loves you, Iowa? Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee does. In 10 minutes or less, let Schottenkirk Chevy make you an offer on the spot for your vehicle, regardless of make, model, condition, or value. With our early lease termination program, we can help you get out of your lease, whether you bought from us or not. Click, call, or stop in to get an offer for your car in 10 minutes or less. Who loves you, Iowa? Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee does. WaukeeChevy.com. Seven plays, 80 yards, capped off Max Pelham. Extra point, 42-0. Ankeny in control of this ball game. That drive took up three minutes, 56 seconds, and it looked pretty, pretty efficient. Ankeny, let's see how it ended. Reed Johnson has been playing a little bit more as the game has worn on, and he r barely got touched on any part of that. Cole, you could see his long arms indicating touchdown long before. Pelham's kick high end over end taken at the two-yard line by Hall. Great block. Hall sidesteps one, gets another penalty flag out. Hall's got a, some space on that right side. He's up near the 40-yard line, but this is likely going to come back. Great return by Hall without the penalty. But all good things can't always be that way. Block a, in the back is the indication, Tim. That's a room out there. Uh, nice return by Hall. Took it here on the, the left side. Took it back across the formation. Found a seam out there, but unfortunately block in the back. 
Hot muggy night here in Ankeny. Crowd doesn't seem to mind. I see a few towels around the necks, a few people sweating, but they are just happy to be outside. This is the biggest crowd we've seen in two years. One thing Coach Nelson talked about was, hey, our guys didn't get to play in front of home fans more than about one to 400 at any point last year. So they're pretty amped to play. It is kind of fun to play this game. Uh, Waukee fans brought quite a few and all trying to sort out what exactly is this new era of Waukee and Northwest football. Hawk keeps it, goes up the middle, and doesn't get very far. Jeff Brooks, I didn't forget about you. I just got on a tangent. Jeff Brooks, what do you know? Yeah, you're all good. That, uh, boy, that kickoff, there was some good blocking, good hitting. Look, watch for Crandall. It looked like he was cramping up a little bit after that kickoff. So, um, boy, that's another good drive by Ankeny, too. Running clock. It, uh, Waukee needs to get a little something going here. Waukee with the football, 7-10. Clock moving. Clock will move in this half with the 35-point clock going. Hawk looks to that right side. Clock is ticking, and the clock expires as the defensive line collapses on him. Simonson, Webb Tate. You know, you see Webb Tate play baseball. He's the was a catcher on that squad that was in the semifinals. He a uh, big kid on the baseball field. On the football field, though, Tim, he looks like there's a lot of guys his size yeah, <laughs> right next to him. He's normal the... big on the football field, but he would be, I don't know if I'd slide into home with him being catcher. No. He's a 240-pound linebacker. See what Hawk can do. He sends Alley in motion. He'll keep it, go up the middle. He's got some room and uh, shakes one tackler, but not two. Penningroth, and it'll be a punt time for Waukee. It'll be fourth down. Well, this is not the only time we'll see Waukee this year come to the stadium. We'll see them in two weeks as they'll be back here to play Centennial next week. Waukee opens up against Roosevelt at Centennial at Valley, then home with Johnston. That is a tough first five games. Matthews to punt the football four yards deep. In his own end zone. That kick is high, but gets a little more length than before. It bounces out of bounds at about the 47, but the question is, where did it go out? It went out at the 47, but on the, okay, that midfield. So I thought it was maybe a little closer towards the Waukee side, but that's the way it goes. Yeah. All right, let's see if we still see J.J. Cole, and I'm guessing we will see the ones for just a little bit more, Tim, don't you think? I think one more series, I think that first series out there, they made a statement. Uh, his only incompletion was that first pass that, that they dropped. But after that, more timing, he got the ball out there quicker. Uh, he went to the wide, he went underneath. I think he's got a lot more confidence in there. So uh, Cole comes back out for this series. Cole and company doing work up 42 nothing, 453 to go third quarter. This is CISN.TV. There's a look at the Ankeny offense as they line up. It's Reed Johnson to the right of J.J. Cole. Johnson gets the call, left side. And he'll power his way past the 35 before. Kingston will have to come out without his, without his helmet. Running a two tight end set in there, so that we call that a, a 12 personnel, one running back, two tight ends. Definitely their running formation, their heavy running formation. Craig makes the stop for Waukee. As I say that, watch him pass. Yeah. Second and three. They go read option. And with the run, Reed Johnson. There's going to be a penalty on that far sideline. Likely on Ankeny. It looked clean early, or late, but I don't think it was clean early is the problem. There's that block in the secondary level out there. When you do that block in space, it's hard to keep your hands in or you know, running defensive back turns. You end up inadvertently shoving in the back, and it's a hands in the back. So they'll call that every time, most of the time. Penalties happen in these first games as the years go on. Even though they have scrimmages like they did last week, and it's still not the same. They're controlled. You don't get this tempo. There's a lot of start and stops. You don't know the play calling coming in, so... Uh, as good as it is for hitting, it really doesn't help your, uh, your game speed. 
3.55, clock moving. Cole, hands off Johnson left side. Johnson had Kingston holding a spot or a moans of ice for a minute or for a moment, but he just couldn't quite get it all the way turned up. He did get it turned up, just enough for a first down. I thought he was short. The official, I couldn't see where the bottom of that stick was. Good job by Osivas out there pulling from his guard spot, pulling out to the left, getting a block on there, creating that first down. Cole looks to the right side. Flushed, throws off his back foot. He's got McCullough open at the 10. McCullough, five, hop, skips his jumps, and his way into the end zone. But it's not going to matter. Holding. This one's coming back, but you at least have the ability to say it sure looked nice for a moment. Escape out of pressure, rolled out, did a little half of the rollout, looked downfield, because that's where the break's going to happen, is that someone's going to break up downfield. Got the ball down there. McCullough did a great job to get the end zone. When they get that big mosh pile there in the middle, where somebody's holding or somebody got knocked down. First and 26th. Well, what do you see? Let me look in the playbook. Let me <laughs> yeah. find, look, search. Where's that first and 26th play? What are you trying to do? Cut it in half here like a putt? I think you try to get something like a five to maybe ten yards at the most. The tight end's been open. They're going to throw the football across the middle. It's intercepted. Intercepted by Strzok. And he's going to turn it up to the 45-yard line. Last year, Cole was picked off. He was picked off, I think, six times over three touchdowns. He's trying to flip the script this year, but that one was, uh, I think the eyes were red there. Yep, uh, Jeremiah Kruger running. I talked about that earlier. He was running that seam right right down the middle. He tried to sneak it in there. Struck, who's a very physical safety, you know, came in there, read the eyes perfectly like a safety does, cut across, intercepted. So it's a big turnover for them. Give them a little bit of life. I think the defense needs that for Waukee. To, uh, they've been playing hard. They've been keeping in check fairly well. They'll see if the offense now they're on the other side of the 50, they can do something with this. Maybe take it down for a score, put together a first down. Looked like the intended receiver there was Cam or Crandall, but it was just picked off there by Strzok. Hit as he throws his hawk. Pressure coming from Ankeny. Let's see, that was got all sorts of new bodies here. Cade Benentham yep, puts he's the pressure. Idiot. He's been playing a little bit. Coming and playing some nose guard. Of the linebackers, the secondary is still the starters. One twenty-one yet to go in the third quarter. Hawk running, and Simonson is there at the top. Let's see who that is on the bottom. Looks like Eaton got in there, coming around the left side. That's a nice place. Eaton's been playing a nice game tonight. Eaton, one of those other Centennial players last season with Moans of Ice. And Leo Ajire. And I'm getting word now, Tim, that there is possibly been uh, an injury in the Dowling game involving the quarterback of... of uh, Pretty significant injury. And that's intercepted by the Hawks. That's Will Cornwell. He's going to reverse field. And if we've got one, two, three penalty flags, four penalty flags, if you've got one and you haven't thrown it yet, throw it now. But when you change fields like that, that's what's going to happen. I thought there was a parade going on. I saw the, <laughs> the confetti on the ground. That's That happens when it's a, they used to call it Oski drills, you know, fire drills like that, that when a player changes direction, everybody's all over the place. Guys trying to get a good block in, they make a shot, they catch a guy from the side, so um, not surprising. But there, I'll go back to the rush. That's We go back, we talked about 54K uh, beneath them. I apologize for misspelling his name. The rush on the quarterback, he threw it up there, overthrew his receiver, causing the interception. So good defensive rush. This is a tough defense to play against if you're behind. 
if they can pin their ears back, this Ankeny defense can bring it. Check off the bingo box of Tim Halber. Bingo, pin your ears back. If you have the bingo, tweet it at us now. We're one more away from the royal flush of the Tim Halber yes. Saints. Oh, I have new ones. Uh, I, you I, do? I've, I've been reading up some new ones. All so right. I, I'm looking forward. This, I have, we have games to go. I have, yeah. to, I have to kind of roll these out in bits and pieces. I, I can't let. <laughs> I can't have a blackout the first night of bingo. <laughs> Cole comes back out with five seconds before the clock. Expires for the third quarter. It's a handoff to, you guessed it, Colin Cadolf, and he's across midfield into Waukee territory. Gain of 28, 26, 27 yards. That's how the third quarter ends. Waukee is in a big hole. Ankeny 42, Waukee nothing. Quarter four in a moment. Who loves you, Iowa? Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee does. In 10 minutes or less, let Schottenkirk Chevy make you an offer on the spot for your vehicle regardless of make, model, condition, or value. With our early lease termination program, we can help you get out of your lease whether you bought from us or not. Click, call, or stop in to get an offer for your car in 10 minutes or less. Who loves you, Iowa? Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee does. WaukeeChevy.com. Holt Plumbing and Heating continues to be one of Central Iowa's fastest growing plumbing, heating, and cooling companies. I'm reminded of that every day as I see our fleet of vehicles in all shapes and sizes head out to help customers in need. We work hard to keep our vehicles clean and in good shape. Some are customized with great ideas and some maybe not so much. But at the end of the day, a job well done and a happy customer means everything to us. Just one more reason why more and more Central Iowans are saying, let Holt handle that. Ankeny will have Ankeny will have the football up 42 nothing. A handoff uh, Reed Johnson. No, I take that back. That is not Reed Johnson. That now is Nate Nessa. I want to follow up a story before the end of the first half involving uh, Dowling Catholic quarterback Jackson Smolik has a broken collarbone, according to Dowling Catholic Radio. So that'd be our friend uh, Mark Amadeo with that report. And so that means Jake English now up, and that changes things. Now, Dowling lost a quarterback last year in the uh, postseason. They had some COVID issues and some other things going on. Always a challenge back up. Nate Nessa gets the call, and he's down near the 25-yard line. Injuries are a part of the game, but, you know, Dowling has been able to weather a lot of them over the years. Smolik, a little bit of ink been written about him and looking for a breakout season, and it's a tough break for him. Just shows that any play, any play can change on a dime. It is a physical game, you know, and things can happen. You could play a full year and, and not get nicked up and play the first game, and, you know, these things can happen. Nessa up the middle. Goes through a couple of uh, defenders and meets four, five Waukee Warriors at the 10-yard line. Let's see, it was, uh, who's the last one? A little slow to get up there is uh, Lucas Strzok, who had the uh, interception on the last offensive, and it looks like we're starting to see some second stringers warming up here on the sideline. Guess they know that interior line, you know, Thomas in there, Mayer at center, um, he's kind of, these are their anchor. Uh, they've done a really good job this series of getting their blocks and, and creating those holes. They go right side over the Kingston area, and now let's see. Push inside the five, down to about the three. Clock moving ten minutes. Coming in now. You can tell the players are coming a little bit quicker. The guys are getting up to the line. You know they aren't getting snapping the ball with uh, five seconds left. They're they're doing it much uh, much more efficiently. Ankeny did call timeout, and we'll take it as well. Ankeny 42, Waukee 0. Obsessively, relentlessly, that's what you can always expect, even when faced with the unexpected. It's a service we take seriously, providing comfort in the rain, tools to help you save, a helping hand along the way, and from a safe distance away, delivering the energy you need while going the extra mile, regardless of the times. Our team remains committed to you. 
out of the timeout, 42 nothing. Last year, we were not able to do uh, some of the things we normally do, and one of them is post-game interviews, and thank goodness Jeff Brooks is on the, on the scene. Jeff, we're going to bring you in right now. Jeff, uh, this is what we like to do sometimes when these games get out of control. We just do some backup producing on the fly. Another yeah. timeout, so we got time. What do you think, Jeff? Yeah, no, I'm all down for it. We can get some kids in here. My lead candidates, obviously, um, you know, would be Reed Johnson. Correct me if I'm wrong. Didn't he have the interception the first? Correct. That is true. So he's had an offensive and a defensive score for a touchdown. And then, obviously, Kadolf, um has been a monster this game. I think, you know, J.J.'s going to have his day, but I think offensively uh, – uh, Kadolf was was the storyline tonight. So right now, Jeff Kadolf has 12 carries, 140 yards. Reed Johnson 10 carries, 71 yards, and a score. Two scores. Correct. Yeah. One offensive, one defense. So yeah, Reed Johnson. We'll try to track him down, and so that's one thing we'll try to do here at these games up at Aikeny Stadium this year is get you some interviews and uh, mix things up. So That's if I can get them both. Right? I know. Remember, they'd get on the bus and leave. <laughs> yeah. we got to figure out. we got to get a liaison on that team to say, all right, radio ne- or TV needs you. I wonder if I know a liaison. <laughs> you also have, you have Braden Simonson, you know, Webb Tate. I'm always for linebackers and linemen. You just get a – they need some camera time. Left side into the end zone. It is a touchdown for the Ankeny Hawks. With the ball in the end zone is Nate Nessa. Good to see Nessa get his first score. Starting Sam Linebacker getting a touchdown. He is listed as the third string running back, so you know that's uh, that's fun. And he was also, like we had mentioned earlier, gonna maybe get more time last year until that Bruce guy showed up. Pelamon for the extra point. It penetrates the uh, goalposts. Forty nine for Ankeny zero. Waukee nine fifty two left to play. We'll be back in a moment. D. Armand Ford Indianola are committed to giving you an exceptional ownership experience. As a family-owned business, my dad and I are in the dealership every day to ensure you experience the D. Armand difference. Our core values of hard work, honesty, trust, and integrity are what we build our business on. Experience the difference at the all-new D. Armand Ford Indianola. Where you'll actually enjoy doing business. The all-new D. Armand Ford Indianola. DArmandFord.com. Hi, I'm Joe the Car Guy with Westside Auto. I'm excited to tell you about our new lifetime oil change plan. When you purchase our plan, you'll never have to pay for an oil change again. If you get a different car, simply transfer the plan over. If that car's oil needs are different than your original plan, just pay the difference. It couldn't be simpler. You won't have to worry about inflation or prices going up. Give us a call at Westside Auto Pros to get details on the lifetime oil change plan. And remember, when I say lifetime, I mean your lifetime, not just your car's. Ankeny 49, Waukee 0, 952 in the opener for the 2021 campaign class 5A football. We've added a class. Makes it a lot easier for me. 5A basketball for girls, 5A. It's not 5A basketball, it's still 4A, but added the class in football. So now just the biggest of the big schools, but there is some discrepancies in size. Pelham. Hits it hard and into the back of the end zone for a touchback. Well, Jeff, what do you think here? This is, uh, is it fun to be back on the sidelines with a big crowd behind you this year? Yeah, it is. I can't believe it's here. Like I said, you know, working at a school too. I blinked and summer was over and kids are back in school and now we're here at football. I can't wait to uh, one of those nights we can warm a bowl of chili and, you know, I don't want winter or anything, but this is nice. It's great to be out here. Tim, that's the guy who's out in the cold saying he's ready for a bowl of chili in the, the tent, yeah, right? He, yep, that's uh, that's our Jeff on the sidelines. <laughs> 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 All right. Waukee goes to work. It's still going to be Hawk. He grabs it and keeps it, and he gets about six yards. 
Let's see here. Max Watson, a tackle. Watson in. Let's see. Sean Gavin goes out. So does Antonio Wilson. Let's see up front. Right on the ball is number 60, and that is Carson Mackey. Handoff for Eddie. CJ yep. Acola there on the tackle coming up. Looks like he's coming in playing a linebacker position. Donnie Brown straight in there as well. Ben Sandvig now playing. Hand off again to Eddie. Going to be close to the first down. They motion to stop the clock momentarily, which in this scenario with the running clock we don't have, but it'll be a first down for Waukee. Looks like Donnie Brown straight, if I get that correct, on the tackle there. Waukee 6'4", 200 pound defensive lineman. Waukee yet to have a passing yard, Tim. Up to 77 yards rushing. Pass is complete, and we have some positive yards. There we go. Up ahead for Waukee on the reception is Dalton Base. That's a gain of five. It'll be second and five. Carson McKay coming in with the nose guard position. Aguirre comes off, as does Brown straight. Hand off to, let's see, that was not Dalton Base. And he's going to lose a couple of yards. Nice play by Brock Adamson. He's out there, stretched the play out, got the running back. With a gain in that pass play, caused a two-yard loss. So nice job stringing the play out, not getting caught inside. Tim Cassidy on that line. Also there is uh, Cade Benentham. Benentham played a lot in the first half. Hawk rolls out. And shoves it out of bounds. Incomplete. Antonio Wilson out there at the tackle. Um, bringing the quarterback down. He just threw it forward outside the pocket, creating an incomplete pass versus a, a loss of yards. Looks like they're going to punt the ball away here. 6.35 left. So I think we'll see some new, probably new defensive players for Waukee, new offensive players for Ankeny. So again, we'll try to get as many names as we can. We have a uh, whistle, timeout, Waukee. When you have this many substitutions, you know, it's, they're usually one player short. Someone's in a new spot. So one thing I want to say if you are an Ankeny football parent or a Centennial parent listening, uh, both of your parent coordinators have been given, uh, have, have, have a document that they can create uh, that gives a little update about your player, name, pronunciation, uh, activities, future plans, and anything else they want to add. So if you have not submitted that, the Ankeny team has done that. The Centennial team is in process of doing that. So we want to get as many guys mentioned and what their future plans are. So we'll try to do that as this season goes on. But it's not just about the one or two players we call all the time. Matthews at his 18-yard line to punt it away. Gets his foot into it to the right. Ball stops up midair, and it'll be Ankeny football at the six-minute mark, and I think we're going to see some new offense. And it is going to be Connor Kaiser coming out, the sophomore quarterback. 
6'2", 180 pounds. He'll line up. Under the lights. Behind him is Antonio Wilson. First snap, they go to Wilson, and he is going to be hog wrestled down by Kone. Wilson does track and field. And that's one thing that Ankeny had worked on, and I know that's something that Centennial has worked on, is adding up, uh, trying to get as many guys out for track, working on that speed and agility. Dowling's done that for a number of years. Wilson, handoff. He gets up towards midfield. And that was Mason Brooks, a tackle. Wilson is a senior, 5'11", 185 pounds. Running out to the far side is Kale Halstead. He's number 16. Lots of time left on the play clock, 27, 25 seconds, so there's no hurry to, to snap the ball at the keep the clock running. Weston and Bally, the receivers to the right of Kaiser. Let's see if Connor throws it here on third and five. They give to Wilson, and penalty flag comes in. Usually in the area of holding. Personal First ball, face mask. Uh, against Waukee. So that'll... They'll create a first down. So the offense will stay out. So that'll move the offense up to the 37 yard line. And the clock will stop here or start in a moment after being stopped. They wind it up. Fresh set of downs. Handoff Wilson, and it's just going to be a lot of Wilson. They could, if they get one more first down, they could, they could take a knee and run the clock out. I got to go. They just called grill items a dollar, so I'll see you in a minute. You finish up the game. We can cover this here. You have three minutes and 45 seconds to get that done. I got to beat all the sixth graders. Do they do DoorDash from the concession stand? <laughs> Uh, some years they've done it. I don't know if they do it now. Again, this is an extension of practice here for everybody. Getting game experience. Wilson up the middle. Grabbing a hold of the shoelace is Andrew Gillespie on Wilson. Nice cut back by Wilson. You know, take it, step outside, plant that foot cut up you know that's where the yardage is made this tonight is you know inside you're right off the guard uh even with the backups in there some good blocking in there so some positive yards so it brings up a third and, and short third and manageable but a first down here would they could like i said they could just take a knee for the rest of the game 253 49 nothing ankeny in the lead wilson goes from right to left Kaiser calls, hands off Wilson, and now just Waukee is counting on a handoff every single time. And that tackle is Morris Kone. And we've seen this, Tim. Sometimes teams that might get down, they their ones need the reps too to get better. This is a new team. Kone, the only returning defensive player for Waukee this year. I'll be uh, curious to see them. We'll see them in two weeks playing Centennial. And we'll have an idea just how much this team's improved. Just one game getting out there and playing. They have some film to look at. Uh, the, the bullets flying um, to see how much they can improve. Kaiser calls for it. High snap. Gives it to Johnson, and he had no chance. That's exactly what the uh, defense was expecting. So we'll change possession here. As we approach a minute and a half.
the new defense out there, we like to wonder if Waukee would go out there and try to put something in the air, try to get something downfield, get some more positive pass yards. Looks like they'll have a new quarterback coming in. That's Garrett Putsey. He'll line up in the gun. Pistol. Hand off. Left side. That's Eddie. So they leave Eddie in at running back. And his tackle that time was Vinny Villamagna. We have a uh, stoppage of the clock. And that's uh, Eddie hobbling off, having a hard time putting weight on that left foot. They wind it up, 51 seconds. We'll get about a <coughs> play, maybe two. No, Eddie's been a good running back for him to that running hard. He's picked up some really positive yards tonight, so impressed with his running ability in a, in a tough night. Hand off left side. That's Cameron Johnston. Johnson gets him a first down, and if Waukee hustles, they can get one more playoff here. Putsy looks over. 15 seconds to go. Putsy rolls out, and the clock expires as Leo Aguirre with the tackle. And that is how this one ends, 49 to nothing. As the uh, two sides make their way to shake hands, continuing, renewing yes. something that they uh, used to do, but mostly you just waved in the uh, years pa uh, last year, so now it's... Let's go shake their hands and move on. So, 49-0, our halftime, or is our final score here. We'll try to line up a couple of interviews and do a quick post-game show. We'll wrap it up after this. Ankeny 49, Waukee nothing. This is CISN. Iowa, Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee does. In 10 minutes or less, let Schottenkirk Chevy make you an offer on the spot for your vehicle regardless of make, model, condition, or value. With our early lease termination program, we can help you get out of your lease whether you bought from us or not. Click, call, or stop in to get an offer for your car in 10 minutes or less. Who loves you, Iowa? Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee does. WaukeeChevy.com. Hi, I'm Joe the Car Guy with Westside Auto. I'm excited to tell you about our new lifetime oil change plan. When you purchase our plan, you'll never have to pay for an oil change again. If you get a different car, simply transfer the plan over. If that car's oil needs are different than your original plan, just pay the difference. It couldn't be simpler. You won't have to worry about inflation or prices going up. Give us a call at Westside Auto Pros to get details on the lifetime oil change plan. And remember, when I say lifetime, I mean your lifetime, not just your cars. Why do I look for the seal? It's about trust. Whether I'm buying a car, hiring a contractor, finding a tax preparer, or an honest mechanic, the Better Business Bureau seal means this business meets high standards. When I see the seal, I know I'll get what I pay for. No more taking chances and no more worries. And I feel good about supporting local businesses. My life is so much easier knowing I can always trust BBB accredited businesses. It pays to look for the seal. See for yourself at bbb.org backslash Iowa. Hi, this is Chris from Fireplace Superstore, and you've probably noticed there's shortages on most everything in the market today. Well, Heat & Glow has helped us out this year, and they are focusing their energy on their gas fireplace inserts. So if you've got a drafty old wood-burning fireplace, and you want to get it retrofitted into a beautiful, high-efficient gas fireplace, come see us. We will have product to sell you. Heat & Glow gas fireplace insert from Fireplace Superstore. 109th and Douglas in Urbandale, just west of Homemakers.
Ankeny wins tonight, 49 nothing over Waukee. They move to 1-0 and to start the season. Let's take a quick look at some of the statistics. Jeff Martens has all everything added up. Thank goodness there's formulas because if I had to add it up on the fly. Total offense tonight for Ankeny, 334 yards. Waukee, 49. The Warriors did get five yards passing, rushing 44. Hawk, 12 carries, 15 yards. Eddie, 13 carries, 30 yards. For Ankeny in the passing department, uh, 81 yards, rushing 253. Colin Cadolf, 12 carries, 140 yards, two touchdowns. Reed Johnson, 10 carries, 71 yards. Nessa, 5 carries, 42 yards and a score. And then uh, it was, uh, you know, the passing was 4 of 11 for, 40, or for 81 yards. Uh, a little better in the second half, 3 for 5 for 37. So efficiency went up in the second half. It was just a matter of yards in that uh, second half as uh, players make their way out the scrum. And we have Mr. Jeff Brooks. He's down on the sidelines with a guy who scored first. Who do you got, Jeff? Hey, yeah, I'm here with Reed Johnson. Reed had an awesome offensive game, but I'm going to tell you what. He set the stage early on with that pick six going. Tell us about that. What did you see? What happened? Well, the ball went high right to me, and I just had to catch it. Yeah. I, was, I mean, right to me. I was a little nervous, but we got it done. So, What did it feel like then offensively to come in and, you know, rack up some good yards, another touchdown on that side of the ball? So you got one on both sides. It felt awesome. Uh, makes it feel good to be able to come in for Cadolf, you know, when he needs some help. And uh, he had a great night, too. A lot of good carries, a couple touchdowns for him, too. What about your offensive line? You know, it's a, a younger unit, right? You only have two returners coming back, but they did a good job up front for you. Uh, they did great tonight. We were running the ball all over them. Um, big old holes, you know. All right. So coming up next, you got Centennial, right? Big rivalry. Big week. Get some liquids and fluids in you. What coach have to say there after the game? Uh, great game. Uh, we made some mistakes that we can work on. You know, it's our first game, so work on some stuff, and uh, get ready for next week. All right, man. Hey, thank you for the time. Thank you. All right, that's Jeff Brooks down on the sideline. He's got one more Hawk with him to have that conversation, 49 nothing, and it's a defensive player who yes. also knows a little bit about offense. Tim's excited. Yes. Who do you thank got, you. Jeff? Yeah, Tim was excited to pull in a defensive defensive man here, um, Braden Sorensen. Braden, you had a Simonson. great – Sorry, Simonson. Um, hey, you had a great game today. Tell me about what you saw, what happened, Waukee, you know, coming in here. What, what did you see back there? Yeah, well, we just we knew there were a zone team. We watched film on that. So we just kind of knew if the running back was away from you, if it's coming to you, if it's same side running back, then they're going to go away from you. So you just got to squeeze down with that tackle. So you got a lot, of, a lot of kids returning on defense. What's the expectation, not just for tonight, but for the games going forward? And, and what's your tone set for the rest of the year? I mean, we just set the tone. We got to... We're putting up shutouts against everybody. So next week, Centennial. What's that motivation like for you guys? It's in and it itself, it's Centennial. I mean, it's Crosstown Rivals, bragging rights for all year. And it's always a fun game. Just go. All right, man. Hey, thank you so much for your time. Best of luck for the rest of the year. Jeff Brooks down on the sideline. Braden Simonson. He uh, had his own score tonight. Tim, yeah. as you put this game into perspective, I mean, it was ugly early for a number of reasons. I'm not just talking about the weird plays. It's just both offenses struggled. They did. It's, it, was a, it was a first game jitters on both sides. It wasn't really clean. There was timeouts used because plays weren't getting in. Uh, but the experience of, of Ankeny, they um, – Waukee came and gave them a good shot, but I think they're an experienced team. They'll be one to, to reckon with. And Waukee is just having to to get their timing in, their passing game down. Um, like I said, they're depleted. You know, from uh, imagine if we would have had Northwest and Waukee together tonight, would have been, may have been a different story. So they're going to grow. They're a good team. They fought hard to the end. Uh, I think they have a lot to build on. Like I said, we'll see them in two weeks, so be curious to see how much they've grown. We could see an entirely different team in two yes. weeks, so we'll get a chance to talk to Coach Baker, and he'll probably be happy to say, I've – forgotten that one you're yeah. new right let me tell you all about your team real quick uh, recap uh, last check valley up on northwest 28 21 that game on our other uh, uh, affiliate here of cisn.tv the other game dowling has just scored uh, to make it 7-7 roosevelt leads east 33 nothing a little bit of a weather 
uh, delayed kickoff there between Johnston and Cedar Falls, but now it's 15-14 at the half. Ames up on Marshalltown, 14-7. Indianola at last check was up on Centennial, 35-13. And Urbandale, a whole lot of offense. Bettendorf, not much offense. Urbandale, 13. Bettendorf, 3. Next week, the crew be with us. We'll figure it out. Trent Condon will be on the call. I'm not sure who's fitting, sitting where. But we'll be on the air next week. But Tim and I and the crew will be back. So for uh, everybody here on CISN, for Jeff, for Jeff, for Tim, for Paul, thank you so much for watching Ankeny 1-0 on the season. 49-0 win over Waukee. Good night from Ankeny Stadium.